the heart of your teams, the heart of Michigan. Valley Sports Detroit, the heart of the fan. This is the game the entire state of Michigan wants to see. Belleville, the reigning Division I champs, led by a punishing run attack, a defense that never yields, and one of the finest young quarterbacks in America, the Tigers are primed for a return trip to Ford Field. Over the last decade, there may not be a better high school program in Michigan than Cass Tech. With a fistful of state championships, past legends have written their names in the history books. This year's technicians are determined to reclaim the spot at the top of the mountain. They faced a grueling path to get here, but can they knock off the defending champs tonight? The MHSA Division I semifinals, right now on Valley Sports. Well, it is the middle of November in Michigan. We knew this was coming. Welcome to the winter wonderland that is Novi High School and a football game so darn good, we couldn't wait until Saturday to play it. Belleville against Cass Tech with a spot in the state title game on the line. Welcome to Novi High. And this state semifinal edition of Football Fridays on Valley Sports Detroit, presented by the Southeast Michigan Four Dealers. Welcome to the living snow globe that is Novi High School alongside Rob Rubick and the rest of our great Valley Sports Detroit crew, Evan Stockton with you. Rob, it's a heck of a football game in a heck of a setting. Two heavyweight fighters about to go to the middle of that ring and start swinging. Man, it's like UP in about September right here, so it's a little bit chilly tonight. Yeah, these are the two teams that people really wanted to see match up. And you start with Belleville, a team that's run the table, Evan, 12-0. And, and everyone said, well, they don't really play anyone. Their schedule is weak. Well, you know what? Every team they played, they've opened up a can on. They're averaging over 50 points a game, a lot of weapons, skill positions. And this defense, led by new defense coordinator Bill Shearer, has been outstanding. On the other side, you look at Cass Tech. Start a little bit slow. Lost three games. Now they put together eight wins in a row, and it starts by beating King. And after they take out King, they tell Brother Rice from the Catholic League. Who's always a you know, solid football team. And then they take West Bloom, who a lot of people, including myself, had getting to the finals this year. Southfield A&T they take out. And then last week, Dakota. And that's a solid football team. I had them early in the season. Good defensively, good offensively. So this Cass Tech team is peaking at the exact right time. And a big reason why they're peaking and why Belleville is equipped to play in this weather tonight, when the weather stinks, you got to run the football. These teams can do it in spades. Oh, they're built for this type of weather. They both can run the football. They play good defense. Big, strong, physical offensive line. Belleville can throw a couple different backs at you. They're going to control it. And the other side, you look at Cass Tech with Sean Hodges. They know they're going to run the ball. This kid's putting up outstanding numbers. And I think the key becomes which defensive coordinator can put as many people in that box to slow down these running games without exposing themselves on the edge for the big play too much. This is going to be a game that we'll remember for a long, long time. Throw another log on the fire. Let's have some fun tonight. Belleville against Cass Tech in a game the entire state's been waiting for for weeks. One of the best quarterbacks in America, Bryce Underwood, against talent for Cass Tech that makes you drool. Let's have some fun tonight on Valley Sports Detroit. This special presentation of the MHSA football playoffs on Valley Sports Detroit brought to you by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. Belleville defending their Division I state championship tonight. They're trying to get back to the uh, indoor splendor that is Ford Field next weekend. But, uh, Rob, if they're going to do it, they're going to have to brave the elements along with Cass Tech tonight. This really is a living snow globe out here, huh? Yeah, it is, but we have the best seats in the house. We're at 50-yard line where it's nice and toasty, and I hate telling our camera people that I hope they're not listening because uh, it's really nice up here. We're in a great view, and it's really going to be not a factor, I don't think, as the wind is starting to lay down, and these teams, once they get playing, they'll never even feel the cold. Now, you may have seen the published reports earlier today. This is a story that we must address as we start the broadcast tonight. 
Jermaine Crowell, the longtime, very successful head coach for Belleville, was formally suspended by the MHSA earlier today. He will not coach this season, and he will not coach the remainder of the season for Belleville. So who is the acting head coach? Well, it's a very familiar name to Cass Tech. The acting head coach for Belleville is Dewan Rogers, 27-year-old, who was an outstanding collegiate football player at Toledo. He played at Cass Tech, Rob. He won two state championships at Cass Tech. He was part of a defensive backfield that sent four men to play Division I football. And we were talking to him earlier this week. I think he's got a little sneaking suspicion of how Cass Tech may try to play this one tonight with his experience. Yeah, I don't think when he started this season, he thought he'd be ending it as the interim head coach of Belleville. But what a chance. What an opportunity for a young man to kind of put a stamp on this team for this season and, and really set his future up in the coaching field. Juan Rogers, the acting head coach for Belleville. He's bundled up, ready to go. And let's get you ready to go with our national anthem. America with the singing of our national anthem as played by the marching band from Belleville High School. Shout out to the hardest working young men and women in Michigan tonight, the Belleville Marching Band with an outstanding rendition of our national anthem. The defending state champion, the Belleville Tigers, are hitting quite the roadblock tonight. The Cast Tech technicians, who believe it or not, are here in the state semifinals for the first time since 2017. Their head coach, Marvin Rushing, Marvin Rushing has gotten them back here. Uh, Rob, what do we need to know about this second year head man for Cass Tech, Marvin Rushing? I don't think anything phases him. He's very composed talking to him on the phone. We had an opportunity. He just seemed to take everything in stride. He has a lot of confidence in his team, and he feels that they're destined to get to Ford Field next, next week. Now, speaking of those technicians, Rob, let's get to everybody's favorite segment, the Rubik's Cube. What are some of the keys tonight? Well, let's start out. I, I really think it's going to be putting the hands on LaShawn Mumfield, the quarterback of Cass. He's going to have to step up. The running game is going to be trying be taken away by Belleville. If that happens, it's up to LaShawn to make plays with his legs and his arm. And defensively, the two big boys in the end, actually the three big guys in the end, have got to get pressure. They get pressure, you got to force Bryce Underwood off his spot and get some sacks and contain. So if they can do that, they have a great opportunity to get the win. And on the other side, you look at the Tigers, I really think it starts on offense with protect and serve. you got to take care of the cue. You get Bryce Underwood time in that pocket, he's going to deliver that ball down the field, and they're going to be very effective because we know they're going to run the ball, but how do they throw it? And defensively, you can't get beat deep. You can't let Corey Sadler get behind you with all his ability. You can't give up the quick strike. So long has got to be gone. Belleville won the toss and wanted the football. Hey, get your offense moving. Get the blood flowing on a night like tonight. That's Kevin Symes and Adrian Walker back deep for Belleville. Undefeated at 12-0. And for the Cast Tech technicians who have won eight in a row, their sophomore kicker George Sanchez will kick it deep. This is the game the state wanted to see. We're getting it on a Friday night in a winter wonderland at Novi High School. Off we go with a spot in the state title game on the line. Belleville, one of the up men, will have a chance to return it. No, nope, that's Ralph Golden who called the fair catch. 
And Belleville will start right there. There has been so much said, Rob, about Bryce Underwood, a sophomore quarterback who by the time he's done can probably go to any school in America that he wants to. But maybe what's one or two things that you think aren't being said about Bryce Underwood that should be said when we enter this game tonight? One of the hardest things for a young quarterback, when you get pushed off your spot and you start to run, you're going to run. He does an unbelievable job of keeping his eyes down the field. He doesn't give up on the routes. And when you can do that and you give your receivers four or five, six seconds to get open, they're going to get open and he will find them. Now, Bryce last week in the regional final win against Detroit Catholic Central, not his best day at the office. He did have a touchdown, but he was only 4 of 11. And he did throw a pick, too. I snap. They give it to Jeremiah Beasley. Running right with room. There is a flag as Jeremiah gets down the sideline. He gets a block, stays in bounds. Jeremiah Beasley has a touchdown, but we have to check that flag behind the play. Yeah, they're going to they're gonna get Julian Johnson, the wide receiver, to the Belleville side, right in your screen. He has him by the jerseys, tugging on it. You just, it's too obvious. The thing when you're a tight end or a wide receiver, when you hold, you're on an island. They're going to see that. So you've got to be even better with those hands inside. Don't grasp. Keep your hands flat. That's what you need to keep your fingers open and keep pushing. But once you close those fingers, you're going to get caught. Rob, on a day like today where it feels like 15 degrees and it's snowing outside, is it harder to block? I, I, the footing becomes harder. I think that's, I was on the field, and you can see the ice crystals forming, so it's going to be a little bit slicker. As far as harder to block, I don't know. I don't think I'd really say it's harder, and I liked it more on a cold day because it kept me warm. <laughs> Keeps you working longer. Right. You give a little bit extra. So, But a great start for Belleville. Gets called back, and now Cass has got to be saying, whoa, oh. We talked about ends around, containment, and they got outside that time and were able to break contain for the touchdown that got called back. First down again. Up the middle it goes again. And a good push ahead for Belleville to get a few yards on that repeat first down. Caleb Richmond making the tackle. Here's the rest of your starting offense for Belleville. Offensive line that's got two seniors at the center and right guard spot. Everybody else a junior. And the thing as well, Rob, about the guys you're about to see on the screen in terms of the skill positions, that's not the only guys who touch the ball. They cycle through a whole heck of a guys. Heck of a lot of guys. Symes, the Johnsons, Walker, Stevens, Yarborough will all catch passes today. And Reed and Beasley are two backs. First throw of the day, it's caught on the outside part of the field. Trey Stevens with room. First first down of the ball game for Belleville. Derek Jackson the third makes the tackle. They're gonna, this one's going to come back to They're going to get Jalen Johnson, the wide receiver to that side, for holding again on that little, little bubble screen. Not holding. On the offense, number 19, 19. 10 yards from the spot of the five. Second down. I think he meant 17 because Bryce Underwood is fast, but he's not that fast to throw that to get out there and hold as well. <laughs> he said 19. I think it was Jalen Johnson, 17. Once again on the edge, and they take a while. So, two holds on three plays so far for Belleville, and this drive is going in reverse. On the ground, and another flag. I think we had a quick start that time. Now it's going to be blown dead, so I think someone, it could have been Jalen Thompson, the defensive end, might have crossed in the neutral zone too soon. Dead ball. Dead ball. Ball star. Ooh. Ooh. On offense. On offense. Well, he took off for a reason. Second down. Second down. Well, Rob, this Cass Tech defense has been playing awesome during their eight-game winning streak. They're barely giving up 10 points per game. There's a lot of guys to choose from, but here's a few we should circle here. Ah, uh, yeah. This, and I think the key one there people don't think is Alex Graham. Since he started playing that sophomore, when he really started playing corner and they moved him to the strong side at times, this team has become different. They're much more difficult to throw the ball on. And then you have Corey Sadler in the other corner, so they're, they, got some, they got some dudes outside. Second down and long. Belleville does keep it on the ground. They're finding room again with Beasley. 
there is not a hold this time, and a whole bunch of yards for Beasley. Sadler finally got him out of bounds. This looks very similar to the first play of the game that got called back. It's a zone play inside. It's just an inside zone, and Beasley bounces it to the outside. A little bit of overcommitment by Rashawn Randall getting up the field, and then Beasley just did what it was like. What they're doing, Belleville doing a nice job, is blocking the perimeter. Now, they got hit a couple holds, but as a coach, you can, you can live with that. That means they're working. They just got to learn to keep those hands from grasping, and they're going to be fine. But those plays aren't big unless they get work on the edge, blocking. First down, 10. Underwood given time to throw, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Jalen Johnson over the middle, and Chase Parker got in the way. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, Underwood saw Parker, number 10 in white, just sitting down in the linebacker, the, the middle linebacker just sitting in the middle, and it went right through his hands. That could have been that could have been a lot of trouble here. You can see Parker reading the eyes of Underwood, and actually not through his hands, hit him right in the face. That's a tough one. You reach up to bat it down, and you don't have time to get your hands back because the ball's coming so fast. So after the incompletion, second down for Belleville. They'll keep it again with Beasley on the ground. And a pretty good chunk on second down, Rob, means it's third down and shorter for Belleville. We'll call it four. And I got, you know, this, I really want him to come up short on this third down play here. Because I want to see the young coach, Dewan Rogers, about near midfield, if it's fourth and one, have to make that decision. What do you do? And this is when you start earning your stripes, so to speak, when you're coaching the Tigers. Uh, and those tough calls. Right now, third and five, I'd, I'd continue running the ball. They're having a lot of success. On the ground again. This time it's not going to work. Caleb Richmond. The senior with another tackle. He's Cast Tech's leading tackler on the year. Here you go, Rob. Decision time for Dewan Rogers. Well, there's many bodies that are coming in. You think they're going to punt it? The you punter, see 24, Braden Lane. I, I don't see him on the field. I if, don't they're if they're going for it, is this the right decision? I think I think it's a lot. Now you got a quarterback that's very athletic. Now you can also possibly pooch this if you wish. Just take the shotgun and pooch it down. They're going to play zero, manning up outside. No safety in the middle of the field. Oh, they went hard count, and they got him. They got Jeremy Christian, number 99. Dead ball. Dead ball. Encroachment. Encroachment on the defense. Five yards. First down. Good job. This is a sophomore quarterback. Show another thing he does well. Real poise with the hard count in high school. It is dead. You don't have to make contact. Once you break that plane of the neutral zone, the play is dead. It's offside. We will never know if they're actually going to go for it, Evan, but it works out. Lifeline for Belleville. High snap. They get it down, and Colby Reed is loose. The Red Sea parted for Reed. Touchdown. Just a little bit different changeup. They had the banger, Beasley, a little bit bigger back, and he was able to get to the edge a couple times. That time they hit him with a little inside zone play, and Kobe Reed just shows his quickness and speed because once he got through there, he was gone. No one was going to catch 23. Colby's on, uh, hit a bit of a heater right now. He scored two touchdowns last week against Catholic Central, and he just went 48 yards to the barn. Michael Hurst, the long snapper, as Julian Johnson holds for Braden Lane, and the left footer swings it through. Well, there's got to be a little bit of concern on the Cast Tech side now. The Tigers have been chewing their way down the field, and that time, the final bite, number 23, Kobe Reed, taking it to the house, 7-0 Belleville. Let's see if Cass can answer when we come back. I 
Uh, anyone doesn't need to warm up, it, sh it should be Kobe Reed. He just ran about 55 yards for a touchdown. We're going to show you what happened here. They do a really good job. This is just inside zone, but they're going to bring the motion here and influence this guy right here. And that's Jalen Thompson. Let it run. They're going to make it look like he's going to go into the flat. Pause it. And what it does is it holds Jalen Thompson for just a second, and he can't collapse down inside and just really nice zone blocking inside. Everyone helmet on a helmet, and Kobe Reed finds the crease and... What a great start for the Tigers, you know. They had about 200 yards rushing in that drive. <laughs> Just got, they lost a couple big ones that got called back. And, oh, Coach, Dewan Rogers got to be pleased what he saw early because he knew he's going to be up against a good defense here. But right now, that offensive line having their way with that defensive front of Cast Tech. So now Marvin rushing on the other side for Cast Tech. Got to wait and see if his boys can have an answer. On that drive, by the way, Beasley for Belleville had 41 yards and Reed had 48 yards. That's pretty darn good distribution, huh? That's 89 yards on about a 75-yard drive because too many, all the penalties. That's the type of math that Cast Tech loves doing. Short kick on the run. Cast Tech has to dive on the football. Wow, that could have been a disaster. Sean Hodge, Johnny on the spot, getting to that football. Well, Sean Hodges, he's coming up, just misreads that little miscommunication with Corey Sadler. Nice job by Hodges, the future Grand Valley Laker, getting on the ball. No harm, no foul. LaShawn Mumfield, senior quarterback, third-year starter for Cass Tech, who's been working his whole career for a moment like this. He ran track in the offseason to improve his speed. He's got a 3.8 GPA. He's going to Ferris State. One of his last high school games ever, Rob. Chance to show out against a darn good opponent. Sean Hodges joining Mumfield in the backfield. First run of the game to Sean Hodges, trying the middle, and he may be gained the yard or two. Took at least three Tigers to bring him down. Amongst the starters that you're about to see for Cast Tech, Sean Hodges has been a monster in the playoffs. Nearly 750 rushing yards and six touchdowns. He's grabbing the headlines, Rob, but I know somebody that you love, the freshman number one, Corey Sadler, who if you don't know his name by now, you got to oh, learn you, it. You'll know right into this game. I'm, guarantee, I'm throwing the guarantee out on that one. He's special, special talent. He's accounted for 15 total touchdowns this year. On cue, it's in his hands. Corey Sadler with blocking. Falling ahead should be enough for the first down as Adrian Walker made the tackle. He's, he's one of the type of players that he doesn't need much. He can make you miss in a phone booth. He's so quick and shifty. He grabs a ball. But the most impressive thing, Evan, we were talking before the game, you and I, and you agreed from the film you were watching, is he plays physical. You expect you can see the skill for a freshman, but for him to play physical and, and really aggressive, that's rare when he's playing with you know, most of the kids are three years to four years older than him. And he's listed on the roster as a quarterback because he's going to be their quarterback next year. But uh, when you've got an athlete like Corey Sadler, you have to find a place for him to get the football. And this year it's wide receiver. Mumfield drops the snap. He does fall on the ball. Rob, what I wonder is, are we going to get stuff like that tonight because of the weather and numb hands? Yeah, a little bit. That's a little bit low. That time, uh, Jalen Jalen Washington, the snap center, it comes out a little low. And it's a timing. Actually, no, not at all. That's right in the middle, Evan. You're right. I, I was looking at the motion. I missed that. Yeah, you got to catch it. The timing might have been a little bit off where he's looking at the motion coming. And he realized he's got to get the ball, like maybe ball fake to the jet motion. And he just rushed it. The ball dropped right out of his hand. But that's those can be drive killers. So now it's second out at 14. Mumfield giving to Hodges. A quick little spurt to the middle. And here comes the rugby scrum again. They spot him up near the 40. And that third down becomes much more manageable, Rob, after the good game for Sean Hodges here. Sean Hodges showing a lot of what makes him great vision the ability to make that one hard cut we just call it like a, a shallow cut where you just plant with the one and just kind of knife through there you don't dance in the hole so a nice job and that makes it much more manageable and now we talked about mumps the word is one of the keys to this game offensively the ball is going to be in the hand of LaShawn Mumfield 
Maybe he might scramble. Maybe he can deliver a pass, whatever it is. It's time that the future Ferris State Bulldog shows a little bit of his repertoire. And it's going to turn into a longer third down. Kamari Anderson started early. Dead ball. Dead ball. Call start. start. Offense. Offense. Number 15. Number 15. Five yard penalty. Third down. I always say this game, whoever invented it and said you had to get 10 yards, it's difficult enough. They're going to have to get 20 on this one because they had the five yard, 20 in two plays. Because they had the five yard fumble on the snap, which sent them back five, and then the penalty. So this is a 20 yard possession trying to get a first down with really only two plays after the drop snap. Third down 12 now. Mumfield fielding the snap. He's given time. Pumping, spinning, brought down at the 40. So he gets the original yardage back pretty much, but not enough to get the first down. Jeremiah Beasley tracking it down for the tackle. For the tackle. And that's, that's why that penalty is so big. It's not that you can't get 12 yards. It just allows the defense to play a different cover. If you only have to get five or six yards, all the short passing game, all the intermediate stuff comes into play where you can just run some curls at five, six yards and move the chains. When you got 11 yards like they had to there, the linebackers drop a little deeper, the secondary is deep, you keep everything in front, and they force LaShawn Mumfield to tuck it and run, and they're able to close and make the play. Number 79, Dion Franklin did a really nice job on that play as well for Belleville. Mumfield remains on the field as Castex punter. It's down the snap. Swings the left leg through it. Makes a bit of a fortunate bounce on that rock hard turf on a chilly night in Novi. Then keeps on rolling inside the 25. So each team has touched the ball once. Belleville scored. Cast Tech did not. Chance for the Tigers to end their lead when you come on back. As we get to the state semifinals, we start playing games at neutral sites. So Cast Tech and Belleville hopped on the highway from uh, different locations to get to Novi High School here tonight. Part of the farther reaches of the metro Detroit suburbs, I suppose you could say. You know, Rob was touching on this in the open. Belleville's run to the playoffs kind of feels like they're on cruise control because you can see the scores there. I suppose, Rob, the one test they got was against a really good quarterback in C.J. Carr in the district finals. When you look at Belleville's road to the finals, what do you make out of it? Well, and against Celine, they gave up 44 points, but most of those were via the arm of C.J. Carr. Yeah. They, Saleem wasn't that much success running the ball, which we saw Cass struggle a little bit here in the first series. They were able to put points up throwing it, but I'm not sure that Mumfield's built the same way C.J. Carr is. He's not at that caliber of quarterback. So this, this really sets up better. And Catholic Central, I saw him early in the year. They had a good front, but Belva was still able to run the football on him. And another flag before the play. Yeah, a little motion penalty. Belva going to make it a little bit longer for them this time. This would be the third accepted penalty on Belleville already tonight. Dead ball. Dead ball. Ball, start. ball start. Offense, Offense. Number, 44. number 44. Five yards, Five yards. First, down. first down. So that'll back up Belleville and make this drive a little bit longer to start. By the way, our head official, Darren Ford, is a smarter man than me. He, he remembered to pack gloves. My hands are still on thawing, Rob, after our open. <laughs> That's on you. It is on yeah. me. It is on me. No one else to blame. Belleville on the ground, trying the right side of the D-line for Cass Tech, and not very much on that play. Reed with the carry, and the tackle made by a couple of technicians down there. As for the Cass Tech road, Rob, uh, to the state finals, specifically to this state semi, if they get there, they have earned it. My goodness, good team after good team. And these two right here especially, you know, a and T gave up some, a lot of points here. I'm some, yeah, A and T took them out early in the season, but Dakota and West Bloomfield, two of the teams that I, when we talked about, there was about eight teams in this division. These are two of them that are remaining that could possibly win the state championship division one. It's been wide open the entire playoffs. Starting to get it fine tuned a little bit now. Second out long, Underwood given the time, but it's incomplete as he tried to slip it into Simes. Take a look at the, the, 
the MSU commit number 55, Jalen Thompson. He's going to be uh, getting no Bryce Underwood the entire evening. There's a good look at 55. He's going to come off the edge hard, and he's going to pressure. And they also, you know, on the other side, it's not like they don't have anyone to come either. They have Rashawn Randall who can bring it as well as Kamari Anderson, both of them. So they can kind of rotate the other defensive ends, keep them fresh. The right now where I see the difference in the edge is defensively, Belleville has been better in the D tackles, not allowing much room inside the guards of Cast Tech. Third down, 17. Underwood setting up a screen that is caught, making the catch and promptly falling Symes with another flag. You may get an eligible man downfield here. I played with a man named Chris Spielman. Chris was not the fastest, maybe a 4'8", 4'7", inside linebacker, but in instinct, reading plays, uh, breaking them down in your mind as quick as you can lends itself to making plays. Personal foul. Personal foul. On, the On the offense. Number 52. Number 52. Uh, Matthew Nickens, number six. Personal foul. Personal foul. On the offense, On number, offense 52 number 52 is declined. You see down. Nickens come up number six, just getting pressure. Yeah, they're going to get Ronald Jackson. I, I don't know if he, was, if he was talking a little bit of trash, but the trash talking that time should have been done by Nickens because he's the one that made the play. He came up and forces the punt. That's a great series. As good as Belleville looked on their opening series, running the football, having three long runs, two got called back. That time, Cast Tech made some adjustments. They came out. Coach Rushing had them ready, and now they're going to get the ball probably on the plus side of the 50 after this punt. Yeah, and the guy Braden Lane is kicking to. I know it feels like it's 15 outside, but kicking to the guy back deep, Sadler will make you sweat. They angle it away Ooh. from him, and uh, that decision, while it's not in Sadler's hands, it also means Cast Tech is going to have awesome field position. I think they should be well inside the 40, I'm thinking, closer to 35. Mm. All right, Rob, so drive number two for Cast Tech coming up here. Their defense gets a stand. Anything specific you learned from that first drive for Cast Tech in terms of game plan? Yeah, if I'm Cast Tech, I learned that the two defensive tackles for Belleville, that's Weaver and Warren, the W's are pretty good in there. There was not a lot of movement. But you can also go off tackle. You can challenge Fairfax and Jackson. Make sure how good their ends are. Bounce a little bit. And here's the thing that I saw about Hodges the time I've watched him. He's had some very mundane first quarters, even second. But the more you feed him like all good running backs, sooner or later he's going to find something. He's going to make a big play. We saw against West Bloom Bloomfield where he just literally blew them up in the second half single-handedly. He ran for over 300 yards in that game. Mumfield wants to throw. He's given the time, and it's incomplete. He was trying to hit Anderson on a bit of a wheel route. You know, they tried to get Anderson going on. The, they had, I thought, Corey Sadler, who kind of flushed it out with the skinny post outside. Number one, he flushes it out, and they just kind of run Anderson on the wheel behind it. I thought he was going to take a shot at Sadler because Sadler really got behind the secondary, Evan. But he decides to throw the wheel. <laughs> that was dangerous because if Mikel Yarbrough looks for the ball defensively, he can, he can just pick that off. Instead, he was playing the receiver. So now Let's second down, run. 10. I'm here. sorry. Look for possibly slip a run in here. I don't think you got to just go all throw yet. you gotta, you got to back like Hodges. Stretch give to Elijah Jordan. Run and left. Thrown backward by Kawan Houston. Out of bounds. But there you go, right, Rob, as you're saying, slip the run in there. And again, Cast Tech, a team that wants to run it, a lot more manageable third down. Here. Yeah, and no problem on second down in this situation because this is four down territory. You're not going to kick a field goal here. So you get a chance, you're going to run a little jet motion. And this is just outside zone, I think, is what it is. They're not pulling anyone to get them out. And doing a pretty good job running the football that time was Jordan kind of dipping in, kind of stepping a little bit, try to slow down, make like you're going to cut it up, and then bounce at the edge. Third down, five. Mumfield receives the snap. Gives to Hodges. Sean Hodges, first down. Tripped up as he crosses the 20-yard line. Beasley made another tackle, but there is a flag behind the play. Uh, 
we're seeing, it looks like we're seeing a lot of holdings on the edge, holdings, and this holdings. is just a killer. Offense, Offense. number 15. Ooh, you got yards, first yards, down, yards, down yards, deep yards, in that territory. Play. Third down. And, and they're, and they're going to get Kamari. Right? Let's pause it right here. Pause it. Look at this. You see him grabbing already. You just can't grasp. Plus, the hand is outside. You're turning him in. That's an easy call. He's grabbing Ronald Jackson, 52. When you're in the... Okay. I've said this once. You just... You've got to get the hands inside. We always call it a drive in the bus, Evan. What you want to do is you want to grab him in here right under the armpit. You steer the bus a little bit. Once you get him outside, you're in trouble. What you can't see is that Rob just demonstrated it on me in the booth. <laughs> Third down long. Mumfield rolling. Stepping up. Brought down from behind. It's not a sack. Camden Weaver finally gets to him. And now, Rob, I wonder, this is fourth no, down punt. long. Do, do you have to punt? or You, you don't have to. Have to no it, it, I, there's no question. I punt the ball. You don't have a lot of 14, 15-yard plays in your repertoire. What, you're going to throw down the field? And here, he had time initially, but Weaver... Doing a good job. Also getting some help by a Jeremiah Beasley, the two-way player. I mean, that Beasley, 6'1", 215 junior. And there's a look at Cam Weaver. Doing a good job. I, I think you, I would pooch it here. Mumfield's your punter. I think you got to flip the field. Pen him deep. You can get the ball right back here if you're cast to play defense. There's your pooch. Mumfield gets it to roll. Keep on rolling. And that decision, a smart one. Belleville's going to have to go the length of the field. Well, it helps when your punter is your uh, quarterback, doesn't it? You can really disguise it. So, as we come down the stretch of the first quarter, you know, God bless everybody out there braving the elements tonight. One of the men braving the elements is the offensive coordinator for Belleville, that guy out. right in the middle, at this time. Kyle Shorts. Kyle played quarterback at Rockford, used to coach at Hudsonville. Now he's your offensive coordinator at Belleville. Right now, uh, the boys are huddled around him, so you cannot see that the man is wearing short sleeves. We will see the bare arms in just a second. Now, Rob and I, before the ball game, we went down. We saw a few of the coaches said hello, and I saw Coach Short, and I said to him, what are you doing? Do you have a death wish? Do you want to get sick? He goes, I lost a bet to the receivers in practice this week. I'm not happy about this fashion choice. Okay, the coach is supposed to be smarter than the players. Now, that's a Grand Valley, former Grand Valley Laker, by the way. And I'm a little bit ashamed that he made a bet like that, that he lost to his defensive backs. I mean, you, you're in charge, Kyle. you got to make a better decision. But that's just, look at that. That is hilarious. You know what? And I talked to Kyle before the game. I didn't even notice it. What? No. I talked, you know, we, you know, we go down, we hobnob with the coaches on both sides and try to visit a little bit. And nights like this, you even manhug a little bit because it gets that warmth. It's cold down there. Look at that. He had right. gloves on, too, and he just took them off. All right, let's see. This is a big possession for both teams. Yeah, they got to snap it into the end zone. Underwood gives, and there's a big pop. Belleville does get out of the end zone, but Caleb Richmond and Chase Parker just delivered one heck of a crunch. These are two teams with a ton of athletes, but they can hit with the best of them. As we approach the start of the second quarter, Belleville, if they want to score again, has got to go 99 yards. Colby Reed did get out of the end zone, but Caleb Richmond met him in the backfield. Second quarter next. Hey, feels like 15 outside and it's snowing on and off, but the crowd is packed in. God bless every single one of them. Valley Sports Detroit, once again, your home for the MHSA Football Finals. Thanksgiving weekend traditional see eight state champs crowned next weekend with Divisions 8, 2, 6, and 4 playing on Friday, 7, 1, 5, and 3 on Saturday. All games are going to appear on Valley Sports Detroit, Valley Sports Detroit Extra, and the Valley Sports App. Now you got to be careful with your cast. In a situation like this, when you have a big-time quarterback with a great arm, you little ball fake here. People, you think you got to run because you're on the one yard line. No, you can take a shot. Look at they got zero coverage outside. We get a shot. You see man to man outside. A lot of space to throw the ball. Beasley got out of the end zone. Then he got tackled in the open field by Parker Underwood here on a bit of a high snap by Gordon. Did a nice job getting it down. Not getting fancy. Just giving yourself a little bit of breathing room. 
I want to see Underwood try to get him outside. If you're going to throw the ball, he runs it so much better than people think because he is a he is a pocket passer. We talked in the open. He does a great job of keeping his eyes down the field in a scramble situation, and that just stresses that secondary. But you just seen right here. We're just manning up. We're gonna we're gonna play big boy football on the edge. We're gonna play zero coverage and. We're going to keep our safeties tight. As you can see, the safety's about seven yards off. Underwood throwing from his end zone. Deep shot. Pass caught. Jalen Johnson got it after Bryce Underwood put that thing on a platter. Uh, we are just talking about you live, with the, you live by the sword, die by the sword at times. They're going to play zero outside, which means... The defensive back's gonna be right in the face of the receiver. You got nine people up in the box to defend the run. The problem here is you don't get home and it's a quick throw. It does a nice job giving a lot of air. And that allows your receiver in that situation, Jalen Johnson, to adjust the ball and make a great catch. Belleville moving quickly. Here's Jeremiah Beasley wading his way across midfield up to the 48. They took the shot. I was talking about, I thought they might do it on, sec or on first down. They do it on second down. And this is just a great throw. And what I like is he doesn't try to throw it too flat. And you don't have to throw the seed, the flat ball. Give it some air, and that gives your receiver a wiggle room to adjust to the throw. And it helps everyone involved. And that young man is going to have a wonderful future. Wow. That's a sophomore, people. That's a six foot, 385 pound sophomore quarterback the number one rated in the country in his class. Chance for him to throw again. It's lobbed to Jeremiah Beasley. Got around the man in the open field. And then he was brought down as he crossed the 40. Alex Graham makes the tackle. But that play, Rob, which is kind of just an extension of the run game, gets Belleville another first down. Yeah, and when you're building the run to football inside, the linebacker reacts slowly when they leak Beasley into the flat. It's the linebacker's got to get out to that flat area. Instead, he gets caught with his eyes in the backfield on the ball fake. He doesn't get out there. And you get Beasley some space. I don't want to be that defensive back. That's one of those business decisions you have to make quickly because that's a big back on a cold night coming at you. Symes on a little pop pass. Kevin Symes cuts it up. You can kiss him goodbye. That is one of the easiest touchdown passes Bryce Underwood will ever throw. Kevin Symes to the house, and Belleville is out of the starters blocks tonight. Well, they've attacked him inside. Now, this time they run the jet motion. It goes as a pass, but it's just an outside zone run play. They, you know, they, they toss the ball forward. Now, whoever invented that was so smart because it gives the handoff. If you do the old handoff and you fumble it, it's a fumble. That's an incomplete pass if you happen to drop it. But Symes gets it, does a really good job. We're going to look at the replay after the extra point here of sticking his foot in the ground, making that defense flow fast, and then cutting up against the grain. And the extra point up and good for Braden Lane. Well, you're going to see here, we talk about stretching a defense. They're going to just run the, let him go, let it run. You're going to see him, signs come in motion to the right. And stop, right here. You see all the defense starting to really overflow. He's just going to cut back against the flow, let it go. He gets underneath it, and then I'm just pretty quick. And a good job of Belleville getting a helmet on a helmet. You don't have to necessarily maul guys and move guys, but you have to dance with them. You've got to stay in their face. Your running backs will make them look good. you got to just stay on them, get accounted for every defensive lineman. They do a good job, and Simon shows that he's got some pretty good quicks, and I like his decisiveness. So Belleville off to the 14-0 lead. But we're not even two minutes into the second quarter, Rob. As Castec comes back in the field, what do you think's going through their minds right now? What's going through their mind? And Marvin Rushing, Marvin Rushing is thinking, "All right, we need to get some points in this drive because we've been hit hard and hit fast by this Belleville Tiger offense, and he's got to believe that he's not going to throw a goose egg up against them defensively the rest of the game. So he needs to start putting some points on the board. So let's see what they do offensively here. I still think they were close, but some untimely penalties really hurt them on the last time they had the football. Let's see if they can kind of keep it together and, and put together a scoring drive." They kick it on the second try. Corey Sadler with the ball in his hands. The freshman looking for real estate. And he finds a little real estate. That man is never down until he's down. 
Let's get a message from family, heating, cooling, and electrical. For over 50 years, your family has trusted Family Heating, Cooling, and Electrical. Call Family Heating and Cooling now for all of your family's heating and cooling needs. Visit FamilyHeating.com today. So Dewan Rogers, the acting head coach for Belleville, is loving what he's seen. As for the other side, Cass Tech, there's still basically a whole football game to go here, Rob. Not quite a must-score drive yet, but you'd have to think Cass Tech wants to get some momentum here. We'll start with Hodges, the back on the left side of LaShawn Mumfield. They'll get it, and Hodges' hands made the first man miss. And then the Pack of Tigers came to get him for a loss back at the 25. Well, this play is designed to go either off the right guard, right tackle, or even to the edge. It's a zone. And what happens is when you do this and you get penetration inside, and the guard gets knocked off. Of course, they're trying to pull the backside guard. He can never get there because of penetration. It gets bubbled. And that young man, I feel bad for Sean Hodges. This is not West Bloomfield, Johnny. <laughs> These guys are, they're bubbling everything inside. They're very physical. And I, I, I knew this when I watched those two defensive tackles, Warren and Weaver. They are men. Second down long. LaShawn Mumfield. Evacuating the pocket, escaping pressure, and throwing a completion. That's awfully close to a first down when you got a tight end like Kamari Anderson, 6'5", 220. Just throw it anywhere near him and let the big man go get it. Uh, one of the keys was mumps the word, and LaShawn does a nice job. Nothing there, has a hard time seeing. Like a lot of smaller quarterbacks, they're comfortable when they get outside the pocket because their vision increases. And then he found Kamari Anderson, the big tight end, heading to Cincinnati. And you know, I'm not sure what he's going to play playing their defensive end tight end. He's going to have some options when you're, you know, six foot five, 230 pounds, 25 pounds in high school. It opens a lot of doors for you. Kamari's committed to go play at Cincy. His brother, Raheem, plays at Michigan on the O-line. Mumfield keeps. Could not get away from the initial tackler in the middle of the field, Andre Thomas. Mumfield can run, scored the game-winning touchdown last week against Dakota with just over a minute to go. If you're sitting at home thinking, oh, Cass Tech's down, they're going to be rattled here, honestly, no. And they were in a dogfight against West Bloomfield in the playoffs. Uh, last week, they were down at halftime. They had to outscore Dakota 21-0 in the fourth quarter to win last week. for Mumfield. Long throw behind Jordan. Man, you got to execute there. You had a couple people to throw to. One was the big tight end, Kamari Anderson, number 15. He was in the short flat. You had Jordan running out at about 10 yards. And this is, looks how uh, you talk about Kamari Anderson for the receivers and tight ends. Rated third there, going to Cincinnati. Michigan Smaj, we knew about that. And another tight end from Dexter. We're going to possibly see Dexter at Ford Field. They got one more game to get there. But uh, the only one I really saw in person this year was Henry Garrity from Brother Rice, and he's legit, too. Does everything you want a tight end to do with a big frame and a lot of room to grow. But right here is a third down and six. Let's see if he can find Anderson, the aforementioned tight end. Mumfield throw into Sadler. Cast Tech, another conversion. Man, a lot of space on the outside, and Cast Tech was happy to see that. And what Sadler does to you, because of his speed and his ability to make you miss, he makes you a little bit leery, so you play off coverage a little bit that time. And you saw the off coverage. Number two there, that was Aiden Walker, playing a little bit off. And uh, it's easy pitch and catch for Mumfield. Nice drive by Cass so far. We talked about this is a very important. Now obviously, there's, it's hard to say must in the first half of a game when you're only down two scores, but a very important drive. Second straight drive, the Cast Tech has had the ball in Belleville territory. Hodges left. Sean Hodges across the 40. That lower leg drive makes it darn near impossible for one guy to bring him down. A little better, more space this time for, there's a good look at Sean coming back. Good, good space by that offensive line, get a little bit of more, better seal on the edge, allowing him when he gets the ball to get vertical quickly. 
He's been forced to the sidelines. He's done a good job with the linebackers. Look at Beasley, Golden, and Beasley of pushing everything and making everything spill wide in the run game. That time, Sean Hodges was able to put his foot in the ground and get north and south. Jordan motions again. They give it to Elijah Jordan, who's got the first down. Tripped up as he crosses the 30-yard line. Tackle made on the play for Belleville by James Robinson. But there's your third first down of the drive for Cass Tech. A nice job by Mumfield, reading it properly. The defensive end comes down a little bit, crashes, and then you just give it to the Jet. If the defensive end goes straight up the field, you pull it and you run it yourself. A little replay. Sean was right on, right on top of it on that last play. This is the closest Belleville has allowed Cast Tech to get to the end zone tonight. Back to the ground and Hodges. Sean Hodges, not away from one. Could not get away from the second Jeremiah Beasley. And there is a flag behind the play. Well, you see all the Cast Tech players clapping, so it looks like it's going to be marked off against Belleville if they accept it. Personal foul, face mask, on the defense, number 22. 15 yards, half the distance from the end of the run. First down. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> you can hear the official trying to make the call and that was a wind howling. That's one, another reason I'm really glad I'm up here. Let me see it. Got a time out, play. Belleville. First time out. This half. Belleville calls a timeout as Cast Tech is knocking on the door. Technicians haven't scored tonight, but they are getting close. Belleville looking for an answer. We'll take a timeout and talk about it during the break. Now back at Wildcat Stadium in Novi, the Belleville Tigers hang on to a 14 0 lead, but Cast Tech threatening now in the red zone. There's a look at a former teammate of mine and a longtime great coach at the collegiate and the professional level, Bill Sheridan. It's kind of a transition move for him. He's been a defense coordinator in NFL. Evan, you've done a lot of research on him. He was DC for, I think, Tampa and the Giants. He coached in Detroit for the Lions. There's a good look at him when he was in New York with the Giants. Just a tremendous guy, and I knew this guy was going to be a coach because when I played against Bill at Grand Valley, he's my teammate, and he would coach me in practice. Like, you're overstepping too far at the tight end. Get your hands inside. Don't show your – if you're going to uh, release inside or outside, and that Bill Sheridan, really, truly one of the great coaches. What a career, 40 years. I mean, you look at some of his stops. Uh, you know, that's just some of them. He's also at Michigan, Michigan State. He was at West Point with Army. So I've, you know, we've stayed friends over the years, and I've followed his career and very proud of him. He's just a tremendous man. And uh, his wife, JC, just one of my best friends in college. So I'm really glad to see he's had such success in his life. Right now, he's trying to draw up a stop here as Cast Tech has first down and goal. This is Hodges. And that time, Bill Sheridan had the right thing drawn up as a whole bunch of Tigers brought down Hodges for minimal yardage. So Rob, you were just alluding to uh, how long the resume is for Bill Sheridan. We didn't have enough time to show the entire resume. Oh, there they are. There's yeah. the first half. Yeah, Royal Oak Shrine. We started out and I remember when I was at Eastern Michigan, We, uh, I, I knew he was at Michigan. I saw him when he was at Michigan State in 98 to 2000 when we Eastern played State that year. Went to Notre Dame. I mean, what a what a resume. And then, you know, the NFL is, was a huge part of his life as well. But he has roots in this area. He's a De La Salle grad, a Catholic League high school player from De La Salle. This is not what we want to see. Sean Hodges, who has just been a master running the football for Cast Tech in the playoffs, slow to get up. Got crunched by a bunch of Tigers after that first down carry. Sean's a senior bound for Grand Valley. You know it's going to take uh, a lot to keep that man off the football field tonight. I think 
you've seen Cass have a little bit more success attacking the perimeter with the jet, with the toss to Sean Hodges. In between those tackles, it's tough. And then, you know, I, I know I've talked about Weaver and Warren and Fairfax and Jackson, but that front four is very, very imposing of uh, Belleville. They, they're not giving up any space. So make them run, get them going east and west, use your speed. And look for number one here. We're going to keep an eye on Corey Sadler. They got they got a lot of trust out there. I'm not seeing any help up at the top. You see this right here. That looks like one on one. And if I'm Cast Tech, you got to take ball. advantage Dead of that. Ball. Delay of game Delay of on offense. Oh, that's Five yards. Second down. Coming out of a commercial. Coming out of, coming out of a timeout, an injury timeout. You get a delay of game. But I, if I'm Belva, I, I think I give some help. If, I have to believe Cass is going to try to get the ball to number one, Corey Sadler, on the perimeter. So keep in mind as well here, too, with Hodges off the field, number two, Cameron Summerer, the sophomore, number 25, is the backup. He's actually used to coming on the field in this part of the field. He's six feet, 210. They use him as a power back in the red zone. This is not abnormal. They play action, throw down the middle, and it's a touchdown. Number four on the year for Kamari Anderson. Julian Johnson. What a wonderful play. Design, execution, more importantly, the call. Marvin Russian, just a beautiful job. They bring Corey Sadler, who we talked about. They're going to bring him in and use him as a decoy. And we're going to get the extra point here, but this is really, really cool play. Longfield will stay on and hold. LaShawn just threw his 26th touchdown of the year. George Sanchez, the kicker. Longfield gets the snap down, and the kick is good. Well, this looks like an RPO, but I think this is all predetermined. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to tease you. They bring number one, Corey Sadler, into the backfield. And then they do a little play action, and they just release Kamari Anderson right down the middle field. If we get another look at that, you're going to see what happens. A little ball fake, step back, got the tight end going right down the seam. Easy pitch and catch. Everything's right in front of Mumfield's face, the quarterback. There's big 15 in white, and that is a much-needed drive you know Kevin when they started out you Evan you said this is important and it was and they executed well they had hit a few bumps in the road but they're able to kind of level it out and, and get the touchdown and it's to what we were saying earlier Rob this is a team that's played grueling team after grueling game over the last six weeks and and they were down at halftime yes. last week they're not going to be intimidated yeah not at all boy I tell you what that heater looks pretty nice that looks dangerous with those flames be I careful boys yeah, i was talking to john baker a dad of one of the cast tech players that i talked to him when we when i did the cast king game downtown and the reason i met the, the guy was that they were uh, tailgating and there was a smoker going and i somehow went to the smoker i don't know why the sausage and brats drew me there but i went there anyways and I, we, we talked quite a bit well, i saw him here at the game night and he said they have the moms of the Castec, they take care of their kids. They got heaters and they got like three or four propane heaters going on. So props to the parents of Cass. And props to our hard work and crew braving the elements tonight. We are spoiled right now in the booth. There's no doubt about it. That's offside. going to be blown dead. There's no freebies in high school. Once again, as I said earlier, when you cross that line, whether it's on defense or on special teams, it's blown dead and they redo. Offsides on the offense, five yards, three kick. And Rob, it does look like as well that the plan here for both teams tonight is there's a lot of great athletes potentially returning kicks, so let's squib it on the ground and we'll give up field position, but we don't want somebody to bust a big one. Well, that, that was one of the keys, I, I think, was, you know, I said gone long or long gone. You don't want to give up that long play, and, and they did. And uh, but they've done a good job overall defensively. But you got to take advantage when you get cast in a situation where it's third and ten like that. You, you really that's a tough touchdown to give up in that situation. And let's see what they can do here if cast can get a stop defensively because this Belleville offense has been firing all cylinders. So after the penalty, they back it up to the 35, and Sanchez is kicking again. This is a short kick that is bobbled and loose. Cast Tech football. 
George Sanchez put it in the right spot, and Cass Tech falls on the football. That's Kareem Daniels. And here's the thing you have to understand is Cass cannot catch us. Even if they get there first, you cannot catch a kick until it hits the ground. And it was muffed by Belleville, and Cass had three guys or Johnny on the spot. And what a change of events this is. They've tried that a couple of times, Rob, in the playoffs. They got one against West Bloomfield, and now they get one and get an extra possession here against Belleville. And it's such a change up for that front line. You're, you're thinking about the onside kick, maybe the ball coming at you on the ground. You just don't think of that pooch. When you see it go near, you start taking off. You're like, oh, oh, it's a short kick. And before you know it, it's muffed, and Cass recovers. So now Cass Tech's offense is back on the field. Mumfield giving to Hodges back on the field. Sean looks all right on this run. He is still going and he lost the ball. Houston stripped it. Got to untangle the bodies. Cass Tech just dodged one. Oh my goodness. When you, when you, you have a six foot three, 295 pound center. And you're going to pull him. Let's, let's, you can see 56 coming out in front. Look at the big guy. Now you're going to see someone come in late. And the ball is going to get knocked out. What happens is a running back, I think Hodges lost track of the defenders. He went by uh, Kayton, uh, K. John Houston. He goes by him and loses track. He doesn't account for him reaching back from behind and punching the ball out. But a break for Cass, able to recover it. Now they're pushing the red zone. Houston stripped it, Hodges lost it, and Canty fell on the ball for Cass Tech. Right back to Sean Hodges. And a bunch of Belleville Tigers bring him down with a late flag. Beasley, the first man making contact. And now we got to sort out another whistle. You can see maybe a little excessive pushing on the bench. Now usually you definitely, you get that call when the opposite team when you're on your sideline let's see here we get a look coming out of bounds might have been a face mask face because mask. there was yes there's on the defense five yards from the end of the run plays first time it was just grasping the face mask it wasn't a flagrant 15. Like i said that was not hit and it wasn't they didn't hit him out of bounds so that was a good play See right there. Yep. You can see him coming in. Um, Looked like it maybe was 55, Jer maybe yeah, number one, Jeremiah Beasley. Remember, that's a role in high school that's uh, not in college, in the NFL. There's no such thing as incidental anymore. Mumfield keeps, keeps his feet somehow, and he got across the 20. Looked like a whole lot of nothing and turned into something. A lot, of, pen Jackson on the tackle sorry, I mean, a lot of penetration up front by Belva. Everything's being bubbled. When I say bubbled, you want a direct line to the hole. Even if you're running like a zone where you just kind of go in parallel to the line of scrimmage, when they get penetration, it makes you kind of dip back to get around it, and that slows everything down, and all of a sudden it lets the linebacker scrape and get up there, and it, it's tough on a game. So they got to be better up front. When I say they cast Tech's front offensive line cannot be getting pushed back into the backfield. Under three to go. All the timeouts left for Cass Tech. Back to Hodges. Split a couple. Got away from a couple of more. Beasley brought him down. But it's first down goal inside the 10. Sean Hodges is starting to heat up on a chilling up. Uh, this is all on Hodges because there was not a lot there. Just a little crease to the left of the center. You're going to see he's able to just split the two defenders there. Weaver. Coming in, number 50, getting penetration, and they almost ran by him. They, they got upfield so quick, Hodges is able to split him. And this young man's got a little something-something now. Yeah, he really does. He's one of those backs that moves as fast side to side as he does going forward. Coach Matt Mitchell is going to be happy at Grand Valley getting him. But they're not good enough right now. In the playoffs, got to buy for the first week. Thank <laughs> you. 
Timeout, Belleville. Second timeout, this half. Timeout for Dewan Rogers in Belleville as Cast Tag knocking on the door. They're trying to tie the game. And now a message from the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. This special presentation of the MHSA football playoffs on Valley Sports Detroit is presented by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. So Cast Tech and Belleville have only met, including tonight, twice. The last time they met was during 2020. Technically, it was 2021 during that strange COVID year where there was a pause and then they picked up the season in January. In that ball game, Cast Tech struggled and Belleville ends up winning the football game. Belleville would lose the next week to West Bloomfield, who went on to win the state championship. Just the second ever meeting between two teams, Rob, that have really become two of the banner programs in the state of Michigan. And uh, just reading what everyone was saying in print on social media coming into this game, everyone was fired up to see these two teams play. First down and goal for Cass Tech. They run with Sean Hodges. He gets an escort, leans near the goal line. He is not in as Jeremiah Beasley kept him out. The snowflakes start to fall again. Right to the line goes Cast Tech's second down goal. Back to Hodges. And the man possessed in the playoffs has done it again. There's touchdown number seven in the playoffs. And we're an extra point away from a tie. Number 16 on the year for Sean Hodges, and Cast Tech takes advantage of the recovery on the kickoff. Now the extra point to potentially tie the game. Mumfield remains as the holder. The snap is good, and the hold is good, and this game is tied. Extra point is up there. Well, let's look at the play that sets up the touchdown, and they're gonna use number one, Corey Sadler, the tremendous player, as a decoy. He's gonna come in motion, and you're going to see the ball fake. They bring him. Mumfield brings him. You see the quarterback signal. Here he comes. A ball fake to him. It frees his linebackers. And they give it to Hodges. He gets a big fellas pulling out front. A nice job. We talk about Jalen Thompson going to state to play defense. Well, a nice job as an offensive lineman. And here's the touchdown. Look at the push. Look at the drive by William O'Brien. 52 doing a great job squaring, turning, and creating a seam for number two, Sean Hodges. And Sean Hodges is like, yeah, okay, that's a little bit better. I like that. You know, we get a helmet on a helmet. Give me, I don't need a lot, fellas. I don't need a lot. Just give me a little something, something. That's all. So, hey, this game was 14 nothing. We're talking about a drive that was so important for Kaz. I mean, they didn't want to get away from them. All of a sudden, they put another great drive. They get another turnover. They go in for a touchdown. And now we're at 14 all game. This is what we expected to see. Yeah, and Sean Hodges, after you score another touchdown, you get to wear a green jacket and then get huddled up in there for a little warmth. Rob, this is a massive drive for Belleville because Castag gets the ball to start the second half. And Belleville only has the one timeout left. Now look, this offense doesn't need a lot of time to work, but still, the odds a bit stacked against him here. Yeah, I mean, there's still, you know, minute 48, you got a quarterback with his type of ability. There's you got 30 seconds or more, that's time to make something happen. We saw with the quick strike capability he had early on, he was able to get the ball down the field and fight Jayla Johnson. We'll see what Dewan Rogers and the rest of the coaching staff draw up for Belleville. Walker and Symes, your two men back deep, and Sanchez back in the field to kick it away. On the ground, it rolls, and it's picked up. On the return, this is Trey Stevens, a new man back deep, and he's got a pretty good return. Starting field position for Belleville up near the 40. Well, when we started the night, it was about 26 degrees and it felt like 15. It was snowing then, it's still snowing. It's been on and off in terms of the uh, precipitation so far tonight. We're down to 13 degrees because that wind is stiff. Hmm. 
Uh, I'm looking at the clock, minute 39, Evan. We said a lot of time for quarterback. Now, they only have one timeout. They used two on the defensive side of the football earlier on in this quarter. So they're, they're going to be hamstrung a little bit. What happens is in this situation, if you're Bryce Underwood, your young quarterback, you realize you may have to move off your spot, but try to throw to the sticks. If you have somebody you can throw at 10 yards, because in high school, we'll stop if they get a first down. And those first downs in high school and college, of course, are kind of like pseudo free timeouts when you're trying to drive down the field. Underwood wants to throw a long one that is caught, going to the ground to get it. That's Julian Johnson. Nice job hurrying up here because this clock will not stop. It's ticking. Under one and a half to go till halftime. Now, if you defensively, do not bite on a double move. Keep it in front of you. Underwood throwing again. There's the pump. Cast Tech stayed home and they got a pick. It's Alex Graham again, who is having the playoffs of his life. Alex needs a block. He got it. He is in pick six in back-to-back -back weeks and his fourth interception of the playoffs. Wow, unbelievable. The ball, I think when he delivers the ball, he puts a lot of juice on it, and it goes through the hands of the receiver. And we're talking a lot about Alex Graham. And I had a chance to talk to some people from Casta, and they said moving him to the strong side, matching him up, he's only a sophomore. Let him make plays. This team's gotten so much better, and this coming out party was after King on the first game, and he's only improved the entire season. That time he was in the spot. The ball goes off the hands of the receiver, and what a run. Taking it all the way across the field, cutting back, and then you only got one of the big hosses to beat getting the end zone. I like his odds. Timeout. Timeout. Cast tag. First, First, this half. half. Here's a look. This ball is a rope. It goes through the hands. Enough awareness to take it across the green. And you wonder if he had the speed, but very smooth. We talk guys like that, they float. He runs so effortlessly, makes one cutback, takes it to the house, and they're, they're looking to get 21 straight points, Evan, down 14 to nothing. And let's see how the Tigers react. Once again, he steps in the throw, just off the hands of the receiver that time. And wow, Graham just getting it done. Man, Rob, what's so impressive about that play, you called this right before the play. Hey, stay home. Don't get beat on the double move. Yes. Well, there was the little bit of a double move that they didn't bite on, and Bryce knows what just happened and how this game has flipped on a dime. Now we're going to find out about this young man, and this is important for him. How does he handle adversity? He had a 14-0 lead. Everything's going well. All of a sudden, being that quarterback's not a hard job. It gets a lot easier. Well, now all of a sudden, you've given up 21 straight, or 20 here with 21 with the conversion. Now we're going to see with this sophomore how he's grown throughout the year and if he's taking that next step. Aztec perfect on the PATs tonight. Sanchez trying to tack on the extra point. And the kick is up, and it is good. You know, Rob, I'd have to think if you're Bryce Underwood, I'd have to think if you're any quarterback, throw an interception stink. But if I'm going to throw one, I may as well throw a pick six so I can get right back on the field. <laughs> and try to redeem yourself. But that's also as a quarterback you understand. It hit the receiver in the hands. Yeah. It looked like it went through his hands and tipped behind. You can't control that. You just got to give the receiver an opportunity to make the play. The receiver did not make the play. It gets tipped, and Graham does a good job of making Belleville pay for the turnover. That's two turnovers for Belleville, resulting in 14 points. This was a 14-0 ball game, and, man, you blink your eyes, and this thing has changed. Yeah, and that's just, that ball goes. Ooh, anyway, was that a? The defender that time, I think that was uh, Mikel Yarborough, number four. Yep. You know, we had him listed at 14 and fours. So I had a hard time figuring out. Uh, but, yeah, that goes through. He plays both sides of the ball. Also plays in the, as a safety. And that's tough. Here's a look at Alex Graham. Sophomore. They got some. They start three sophomores, I think, on the defensive side. He 
Yeah, Logan Howell plays a lot at defensive tackle, number 68. He's a 6'1", 285 pound sophomore. And we know about uh, Kasia Shivers in the secondary, 6'182 sophomore. Derek Jackson plays quite a bit of 5'11", 185 sophomore. And let's not forget about the freshman, C.J. Corey Sadler. Sanchez back in the field to kick it away. This is another wobbly ball. And Belleville this time does fall on the football. Alex Graham knows something about pick sixes. Last week, late in the game, Macomb, Dakota needed a miracle. Ethan Hamby, their quarterback, was trying to say a prayer. And unfortunately, Alex Graham was the man who answered a prayer for Cast Tech. Well, you want to put the final nail in the coffin. You get a pick six like that. It ends up being a two-score win for him. Number 11, he seems to be a prime-time player now. The lights are on. That's when he plays the best. Alex Graham, Rob, as you were saying, a guy who this year didn't even start on a 2 deep for Cast Tech. And now uh, you may have noticed those maize and blue gloves. He has been offered by Michigan. All right, take two. Belleville, another shot. Still that one timeout. On the ground with Beasley. And he goes right out of bounds. His running back counterpart, Hodges, the one who escorted him out of bounds. It shows you when you start getting into big games in the state semifinals, you see Sean Hodges playing safety. Normally doesn't start. Usually they play Nick Inspector or Shivers at the safety positions. This is also their nickel package, so they bring him in to play. But I got to look up top. If, I, if I'm Cat, if I'm Belbo, I'm looking up top, trying to get some single coverage somewhere. Underwood to throw. Deep shot down the middle. Incomplete. Sadler, the man in coverage, and they just flagged him. He was trying to hit Jalen Johnson. Underwood mm. looking for him. And Corey Sadler's going to hate this call. Well, I'm going to get another look at it because the first time in fast motion, I just saw a couple of people running next to him. Now, I know people from Cass might be saying, well, that ball landed five yards in front of him. It's uncatchable. No such thing in high school as uncatchable ball. They take the subjectivity out of the officials. It's either pass interference or it's not. See the opportunity. Pass in the fence, on the defense, number one, 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. Well, here's one coming right into your living room a little bit. Now, I'm not sure what they, if it was earlier than that, because there was nothing towards the end. Oh, a little grab and a little tug of the jersey. A little bit. I don't think it really influenced what happened to the play, but it just one of those plays that just doesn't look right. Thou shall not grab when you're a defender. Is that the 11th commandment? It is the 11th commandment. It's number one for a lot of coaches. Of, that's <laughs> the one. Move it up the food chain. That's the one Moses forgot to pick up, apparently. <laughs> Underwood wants to throw again. He's forced to evacuate the pocket. He's motioning a man downfield. And the pass is tipped and picked. Look who got it. Sadler makes up for his mistake. Corey Sadler down the sidelines. And Bryce Underwood, on two of his last three passes, has thrown picks. And being Nostradamus, I made the call early in the game. We're going to be talking about number one before this is done now. They, we've talked a little bit, used them a decoy on offense a few times. This young man is a freshman. That's what people need to understand. He was playing junior high football last year. Now he's in a state semifinal game making plays like this. And Underwood does a great job. I thought there was something there. Sadler turns the wrong way, tips it to him. Come on, come on now, really? Are you kidding me? You can't coach that. Okay, we're going to do a tip it to yourself drill today, guys, on defense. No, that's just innate. That player, he, we're going to have so much fun watching the next three years. I just, I can't comprehend that. How good was he? Did he have like 100 touchdowns in eighth grade last year? I, I don't I mean, who, who? Yeah, we should Dr. Brian Henry, come pull up his eighth grade stats from uh, the police athletic league, wherever his eighth grade school was. I'm sure Devin Gardner has that song. This is Sean Hodges, keeping the legs moving, and he's out of bounds. Michael Yarborough, the man to get to him. Yeah. Out of bounds, two and timeouts, 20 seconds. That's a lot of time here for Cats Tech. Yeah, you got 22, and here's the, Sanchez is probably good on night like that. I say 30 and in, so you got to get pretty near the 15 yard line probably to have a legitimate opportunity. So that's still 35 yards. So that also means you got to take a shot. Let's look here. 
see if they try to get their freshman sensation down the field a little bit. And remember as well, Castec gets the ball to start the second half. There is an opportunity here for them really to put themselves in a primo spot in some big-time airspace against Belleville here. Keep an eye up here now. You get, oh, they're going to roll coverage. You see the safety come up? They're undercutting a little bit. This is a draw for LaShawn Mumfield. First down, LaShawn Mumfield. Clock stops as they move the chains, and Marvin Rushing will burn one of those timeouts anyway. Well, timeout. I think with one timeout remaining. Second timeout just had. You really don't have the opportunity. Nah, it'd be hard to get two plays in. Well, they're going to, once again, they're going to see the motion. Out of the backfield, just set up and go. Offensive lineman, you know it's a predetermined. You see the lineman set, and then they attack the linebackers. They get down the field, and LaShawn Mumfield does a nice job of getting in that crease and moving the chains. But you're still, I'm going to guess, probably close to 20 yards from having a legitimate field goal opportunity for Sanchez. You know, when the wind shows at 13 degrees, that ball kind of, you know, deflate gave a little bit there. Kind of settles in. <laughs> it shrinks, and it just doesn't, have, doesn't come off the foot the same. All right, so here's George Sanchez, the sophomore kicker, warming up for Cass Tech. He's made all of his extra points tonight, but he's 3 of 6 on field goals, and as Rob was just alluding to, his longest is 35 this year. So realistically, you got to get to... 30 a night like this, maybe? Yeah, probably got to get to the 15 to even think yeah. about it, which from this spot, you're sitting at the 37, so that's still yeah. a good chunk of yards here. Yeah. I, I got I to take a shot. I got to give... When you have a dynamic player like Corey Sadler outside, you've got to give him an opportunity to make a play. Now, you got the big tight end. You can run down the seam. you got Kamari Anderson. That's another option. Uh, you can maybe try to – that defense is going to run off a little bit. Maybe try to get the ball in the flat to Sean Hodges. So I've covered all bases here. But I'm just telling you, if it was me, I'm, throwing a, I'm giving a 50-50 ball to number one at the top of the screen here in white. Field on a draw. Hodges slips. Yeah, that's a little bit. I think they're trying to catch. I think Marvin uh, rushing top. Hey, we'll catch them all trying to play like a prevent, get everyone off time the out, ball. Cast. Last, last timeout, timeout this half. This and half. slip a running plate or maybe uh, Sean Hodges could pop it, but Belleville was more than ready for the run run down there. And now they can put him into a, what, six seconds? Maybe one Hail Mary. Everybody, make sure to stick around at halftime as Mickey York is going to preview the 15 semifinal games across divisions one through eight. And we're going to get to know LaShawn Mumfield a little bit more. Castex senior signal caller as he tries to lead Castex back to the state finals. Okay, Rob, so let's evaluate the situation here. You got about five ticks on the clock. You are out of timeouts, 39 seconds. Do you try to run one play and get out of bounds or you throw into the end zone? No, if you're in the NFL, I'd run a short out if you get a field goal attempt, but you're not kicking a 50-yard field goal here on a night like this. So I do the Hail Mary. Now the question is, can Mumfield, does he have enough arm from the 45 to throw it 45 yards in the end zone? I would think so. This young man's going to play at Ferris State. He's got to have some arm strength. And most high school quarterbacks are going to throw right around 50-ish. So if he can do that, just drop back, get all your guys down there, and give them a chance. Throw it up. Mumfield has thrown for a touchdown tonight. He found Kamari Anderson. Hodges had a rushing touchdown from a yard, and then that pivotal pick six by Alex Grant. You think Castex factoring in the back of the mind here as well? Okay, we get the ball to start the second half here, so we don't have to go for broke. You don't, but if you're going for broke in the end zone, the, the, the reward definitely outweighs the risk. The risk is they intercept it, but the chance of going back 100 and some yards with it, I think is pretty slim when your team is all at the 40-yard line. So, yeah, I would... Uh, and keep an eye on the big guy, tight end down the middle, 15 here. You see, see him right here, Kamari Anderson. You might send him down the seam, try to get him on a safety. Mumfield, the deep drop. This is the final play of the first half. LaShawn throws, and it is battled for along the near sideline. He was trying to get Alex Graham, and Belleville made a call with an interception. Yeah, they did wrestle it away. That's Adrian Walker. Guy whose potential they love. So Belleville gets a little bit of juice to end the half, but Cast Tech on a 21 nothing run to end the half, Rob, and they get the ball to start the second half. 
LaShawn Mumfield, the senior quarterback, has got his boys two quarters away from getting to Ford Field. Belleville started with 14. Cass Tech, then the volley back with 21. Mickey York standing by in the studio. Halftime coming up. Halftime and the only semifinal game in the state being played tonight. Cast Tech and Belleville at the half. Cast Tech has rallied from a 14-0 deficit. And Alex Graham pick six has brought them all the way back for a 21-14 lead at the break. Hello, everyone. Mickey York in our Football Friday studio. Cast Tech and Belleville the schedule all to themselves tonight. The remaining semifinal games will be played around the state tomorrow beginning at 1 o'clock. Here is a look now at the rest of those matchups. The winner of tonight's game will take on the winner of Clarkston and Caledonia. They'll play at DeWitt High School tomorrow afternoon. Clarkston coming off a last-second win at home over Adams last week. Caledonia blew out Grand Ledge in their regional final. In Division II, Grand Rapids Forest Hill Central will take on Dexter. That game will be played at Portage Northern High School. And in the other D2 semifinal, Birmingham Groves will face Warren D. LaSalle, who's trying to make it back to the finals for the third straight season. That game will take place at Troy Athens. In Division III, DeWitt will face Muskegon at Greenville High School. DeWitt beat the Big Reds in 2020 in the semifinals on their way to a state title that season. And the other semifinal will pit Detroit Martin Luther King, who is trying to hand the Mason Bulldogs their first loss of the season. That game will be played at Westland John Glenn. In Division IV, Grand Rapids South Christian is in the semifinals for the first time since 2014. They'll take on the Eddies of Edwardsburg at Battle Creek, Harper Creek, and the Martians of Goodrich making their first ever semifinals appearance will take on 12-0 Riverview at Rochester High School. In Division V, 12-0 Gladwin will take on Grand Rapids Catholic Central, which is looking for its fourth consecutive state title. That game will be played at Ithaca High School. And Detroit Kent Country Day will face 12-0 Frankenmuth. The Eagles making their third straight semifinal appearance. They'll play that game at Lapeer High School. Division VI features Nagani and Reed City. Nagani is in the semis for the first time since 2003. They will meet at Gaylord. And the 12-0 Clinton Red Wolves will battle Grand Rapids West Catholic, who are in the semifinals in their first year in Division VI. That game will be played at Coldwater High. Division VII, New Lothrop will take on undefeated Traverse City St. Francis at Clare High School. New Lothrop beat St. Francis in the division semifinals back in 2020. And 12-0 Napoleon will face Jackson Lumen Christie. It's been a big turnaround for the Titans, who are in the semifinals after losing their first three games of the season. They haven't lost since. That game will be played at Chelsea. And finally, in Division VIII, Ubley has some traveling to do. They have to go all the way to Petoskey, but they will take on Iron Mountain, which is coming down from the UP themselves. And the Mountaineers of Clarkson Everest Collegiate will take on Ottawa Lake Whiteford. The 12 0 Bobcats are in the semifinals for the second straight season. That game is at Woodhaven High School. Valley Sports Detroit is once again your home for the MHSAA football finals. The Thanksgiving weekend tradition continues with eight state champions crowned with Divisions 8, 2, 6, and 4 playing on Friday and Divisions 7, 1, 5, and 3 playing on Saturday. All games will appear on Valley Sports Detroit, Valley Sports Detroit Extra, and the Valley Sports app. So a busy day around the state tomorrow, but when we continue, we return our focus back to tonight's game including an in-depth look at Cass Tech's talented quarterback, LaShawn Mumfield. Natalie Kerwin chats with a technician signal caller next. This special presentation of the MHSAA football playoffs on Valley Sports Detroit is brought to you by Legacy Football, the number one football development program in Michigan, and by Glassman Automotive. Got it at Glassman. Halftime in Novi, where Cass Tech now leads Belleville 21-14. You know, the technicians are no strangers to playing November football. But after starting the season 1-3, and three, they were out of wiggle room. 
So all they did was rip off eight straight wins against the likes of Martin Luther King, Brother Rice, West Bloomfield, and Southfield A&T, just to name a few. And then last week, they knocked off unbeaten Macomb, Dakota. With another trip to Ford Field within their grasp, they are right back where quarterback Deshaun Mumfield thought they would be. Natalie Kerwin sat down with the technician senior to talk about what a wild season it's been and what it's taken to get this far. How would you describe yourself as a quarterback? I would describe me as shifty and you're not going to know what I'm going to do next. Good morning, a new day is dawning, a new swag, a new bag is calling. Stop soaring, my lips are falling, life is good. Mumfield this time drops back to pass, looking on the outside, got his man, touchdown! Field keeps running right, and he's in untouched. Touchdown, cast tack. Well, Sean, third year as a starter, I guess it's already here, your senior year. Right, I can't believe that. I feel like it was from, it was just my freshman year playing, you know, so. It's, it's really, it's a really big deal for me right now, and I can't believe it. It's my last year of high school, so. Do you feel like losing a lot of seniors, you kind of had to step in that role and embrace a more leadership role this season? Uh, yes, of course, especially me being, you know, one of the more experienced guys. Uh, you always have to step up, always have to uh, bring in the young guys and tell them, you know, what to do, what not to do, because, you know, everything runs on you, so. You know, just if things don't go right, you have the chance to fix that. You have the opportunity to, to, you know, tell the offense to calm down. You know, we can control this game and we can win this game. What would you say the biggest difference between this year's Cast Tech team versus last year's? I would say it's probably just the maturity and the togetherness. And also just the, you know, the young people we have, you know, for us to be like, together and this many young people, it just for the future for Cast Tech, it's just, it's outstanding. There's been a few off years, you know, in the past couple of seasons, you guys through the 2010s were really, you know, getting to the state championship and bringing home titles. And I guess, how can you get there? Uh, just really be, come together as a team, you know, the past years, you know, the, the people who's, the teams who uh, won the championship, they were together and they were a player-led team, they were player-led. I know the coaches didn't have to do, have to really say anything. It was always the seniors getting on the freshmen, the freshmen getting on the sophomores or anything like that, just to, you know, police each other. And that's what we have to do here to become another, you know, championship caliber uh, team. How far do you think your team can make it this year? Very far. We are a, a, a championship, you know, team. We can make it. Every year I feel like we can make it, you know, it's just, it takes us, it takes the players to believe it and actually put in the work to, to get there. We are just getting started with our night here on Bally Sports Detroit. Coming up after high school football, we have some Detroit basketball for you. The Pistons in Los Angeles to take on the Lakers. Our coverage starts at 10 p.m. with Pistons Live. This special presentation of the MHSAA football playoffs on Valley Sports Detroit is brought to you by the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. Get you back out to Novi High School for the second half between Cast Tech and Belleville. Right after this, enjoy the rest of the game, everybody. Getting ready to start the second half with a spot at Ford Field on the line. Cast Tech scored the final 21 points in that first half to take a lead at halftime. Time for the Menards' big money moment. Uh, there were a bunch of them in the first half, so let's just go through. Belleville, on the strength of this quick little popcorn pass to Kevin Symes, raced out to a 14-0 lead. And I think a lot of people in the stadium were thinking, oh boy, here comes the Belleville tidal wave. But then Cast Tech just started making plays. They get a touchdown pass from Mumfield to Anderson to make it 14-7. Then, just a monster play in this ball game, An onside kick that Cast Tech recovers. That is their second recovered onside kick in the playoffs. They pay it off immediately, march the football right down the field. Sean Hodges with a couple of big runs, and then he pays it off with a one-yard touchdown. And then things started really getting interesting defensively for Cast Tech. They would pick off Underwood twice in the second quarter. 
the first Alex Graham, who right now is just ridiculously hot. Five picks this year, four in the playoffs, and he has pick sixes in back-to-back -back weeks. Rob, as we look at the stats from the first half, what are a couple of things that stand out to you? Uh, there's only one thing right here. Two turnovers, the most telling stat in football. The time of possession, don't care about, doesn't really matter. It's what you do when you have it. The total yards, you look at Belleville, has actually outgained. So that shows you that doesn't matter. But that one, that is a biggie, people. You win that battle, you're going to win the majority of your football games. And they got to do something about that. So what you're going to do if you're Belleville, you can't turn it over anymore, and you're going to try to create a turnover in the second half. By the way, a shout-out to the entire crew here at Novi High School who just did a remarkable job earlier today getting this field ready for play. I know so many of you watching at home probably had to do something similar with your driveway and your car earlier today. We're all getting back in snow shoveling mode. Don Wachowski, the athletic director here at Novi, and the rest of his entire crew just did a remarkable job getting this facility ready for play. Tip your caps to all of them so we can play this football game without complaining, without controversy. Well, they should have been in Mount Pleasant Wednesday night. They could done, they did a better job here. To the, I watched that Central Western game after I, after Eastern got the win down in Kent, Ohio, on our way back on my phone. I'm watching. I'm like, you guys know what, like snowblowers or plows or whatever. Do something. I mean, it's six inches of snow starting the game. Did you see they were building snowmen during the game? Yeah, did you see the one up? in the stands? I did. That was great. I love that. That's pretty creative. There were a lot of touchdowns dashing through the snow in that game, am I right? Yeah, yeah. more importantly, the Chips oh. chips got beat, and Eastern will be the only max school out of the state of Michigan going bowling this year. Go Eagles. There's a few future MAC players on this snow-covered football field tonight. I think a lot of hot showers are in everybody's future here at the facility today. So, Rob, turning back to the, to the nuts and bolts of the football game itself, what a monster drive this is coming up for Cass Tech up by seven. Yeah, they're all, you know, you get, as the game shortens, all the drives seem to get bigger and bigger because the chance of influence the outcome gets less and less. So, yeah, they need to try to possess the ball, come down the field, and, and vice versa. It's big for Belleville. The Tigers need to kind of bow their back a little bit, get a stop. They'll kick it away. Here's Sean Hodges on the return. Sean running left. And he'll get tackled by a couple of Tigers. Michael Yarborough, one of the men there for Belleville, making the tackle near the 35-yard line. Yeah, I really like after that return. is great job. Sean Hodge, he gets tackled, pops right up and runs his sideline. I love that. That's a class act, good player. You don't let any of the talking and riffraff go on. You just leave, take yourself away from the situation. What would you take away from the quarterback Mumfield's play in the first half? Well, they didn't ask him to do a lot. But he, when they asked him for the one play they had in their back pocket, that touchdown, that little play-action pass to Kamari Anderson on the scene, he delivered a strike. So that's what you want for your quarterback? Sean, uh, LaShawn Mumfield does not have to win the game single-handedly. He has to manage it, and when the opportunity presents itself, make a play. Did throw a touchdown in that first half. First one that Cast Tech scored. Found Anderson on the play. Though motion Sadler, Mumfield with a high snap bringing it down. It is a loss, Rob, but that is one of those little moments in a game where having a senior quarterback is so valuable out there. Yeah, and for someone who's not very long in stature, he does a good job of reeling in that high snap. And you lose two yards, but you don't lose the football. And that's the most important thing. You live to fight another down. Cast Tech often cycles through centers. You're getting a look at Jelani Walker, number 51 who was actually listed on the depth chart as a right guard, but Cast Tech famously will move their offensive linemen around throughout the game. It's not abnormal to see him snapping it right now. Another high snap. Mumfield gets it down and finds Sadler. That's always a good decision. Corey Sadler finishes the run powerfully. Belleville thinks the ball's out. It is out. It's Belleville football. Well, we talked about the thing you can't do. We just went through the stats, Evan. The reason you're up if you're cast at 2 0 on the turnover. You can't turn the ball over. Give him the short field. Give him the extra possession. That's what you're doing. Corey Sadler does a nice job on this little one man screen getting up the field. But then they just, you get, ball, you get hands on the balls there, and they're doing a great job of tugging and pulling at it. And 
Boy, a turnover they needed desperately. Tip your cap to Andre Thomas, number zero with black and orange on that play. Big hit, ripped it out, and now Belleville with business. Well, I'm sure they work on that daily. The first guy in, you hold him up. Second guy in, you take the ball. And you see that in today's modern game way more than they used to, and that's uh, it creates a lot of turnovers. Let's see if they bring Jeremiah Beasley back in. Start running the ball with him. Here he is. Jeremiah cutting right and gaining a couple of yards on first down. Rob, the thing that I was thinking about at halftime, Bryce Underwood's this amazing sophomore quarterback. There's been little to no adversity in his high school career. He just had some to end the first half. What do you think his mind is right now after those two interceptions? Just kind of a reboot, turn the computer off, turn it back on like I do, and reboot a little bit and say it's a one possession game. You're not down 35 nothing. It's a one possession. You got the turnover, take advantage. On the ground again, and Beasley was met. Did lead forward for a couple of yards, but Chase Parker had the initial stick. And Chase Parker read his key. He's the linebacker. He didn't chase ghosts. He saw the guard coming. He knew it was coming back to his way. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna look right here. He's going to keep his eyes up this way. All right, let it go. Does a good job. See the guard coming? He knows the guard pulls from the opposite side. The ball's coming too. The guards will take you to the football. And they pulled the left guard that time. They bring him out in space. Ronald Jackson, 52. He stayed home, took on the running back. Great play. Sets up a third and five. Motion signs across the formation. Underwood looking in his direction. They get it to Kevin Symes. And he's darn close. Got the feet inbounds and got the first down. And that's a great throw. The reason this is a great throw, it's not the distance. It's not how hard he throws it. But look what he's got coming at him. You talk about staring in the face of danger. And that ball goes out. He gets hit. But he stands tall, delivers the ball. Great job. Gets one foot down is all you need. And move the sticks. Underwood gets the snap down. Beasley waiting his way into the defensive line. And he's wrapped up near the 30 by Parker again. And now Chase is slow to get up. Chase is senior. One of the team's leading tacklers, 52, entering tonight. This is a smart man. Wants to be an engineering major in college. Just thinking of those math classes give me a headache. Late getting him off the field and a timeout now. Timeout. Chaos. First timeout, the second half. In a ball game like this, timeouts burned early in halves can sometimes come back to haunt you. Belleville with the football trying to tie up this game on a chilly night in Nova. Three minutes into the third quarter, Belleville's got the ball trying to tie up the game. Make sure to stay tuned after our game tonight. The Pistons are out west and taking on LeBron and the L.A. Lakers. Mickey, York, and Tim McCormick coming up with Pistons Live as soon as our game ends here at Novi High. Might be tempted here, Evan, to throw the football, but boy, that running game until Cass has proved, proved that they can stop it consistently. I, I keep pounding the ball. You're in four-down territory. Give to Jeremiah Beasley again. Ran a long way to get a couple of yards, and here comes a flat. Now when it comes from the back, Judge, it's usually a hold on that side, and it came a little bit late. Well, that's going to be a drive killer. Now, I said you just start running the football, and you're trying to establish the run, and now that puts you in the second down and long, and it's going to bring the pass back into play. Holding, holding, offense, offense. Number, 17. number 17, 10 yards, 10 yards. from the end of the run, second down. Aaron Ford has been an active man tonight. So as you say, Rob, I mean, this is the potential to be a drive killer. You back it up to the 40, and you still got to get inside the 25 to about the 23. Yeah, but you can't press the panic button here, you know. You know so it's second and 17. Now, if you're Cass, you're thinking what here, Evan? You're thinking they'd probably come out and throw the ball. So if you, 
if you want to try to cross him up, maybe you run the ball. Maybe you get Bryson, you know, you've seen him hand the ball off. He can always pull it and get to the edge himself. We'll try to throw with Underwood here. He has to step up in the pocket. There he runs, and he gets pushed out of bounds by Caleb Richmond. Frankly, Rob, that's a thing that he doesn't do very much at all. He's only got a handful of runs this year. But when he has to, he's effective. Yeah, you saw right. That's a great play. You have second down and 17. You pick up eight. Now puts you in a third and nine, which brings the run back in because you're in four down territory. So you have two plays to get nine yards. Nothing was there, and he just tucked it and ran. And you can see he has good athleticism. He has good speed and quickness and does a nice job of set up a much more manageable third down. Is this four down territory here? Oh, 100%. Why? Well, but first of all, you're not going to punt because you're punting the end zone. It's a tw you're getting 12 yard net punt. That's not worth it. It's all, you know, and if you, uh, you know, try to fake it, you don't have to fake it in this territory either because teams know it. Underwood on third down. He's being brought down. The future Spartan, Jalen Thompson, got him. Now we talk about one of the keys was ends around. How are you going to do? How are you going to match up against those two nightmare ends? And that time, number 55, and look at Jalen Thompson. He, he's going to win. He's going to come from right here. He's going to get pressure. He's going to make a nice move, cut, cut down, takes the edge, puts good movement, cuts back inside. Man, that's, that's a big man. Oh, that's Nate Johnson. Nate, by the way, number 58 that he just kind of manhandles, 6'5", 330. That's no hummingbird. Yeah. And he just gets manhandled by 55. That's huge. That is Thompson's 11th sack of the season. Braden Lane's left-footed punt off the side of his foot. And this ball will die just shy of the 25-yard line. So both teams get the ball once to start the third quarter, and neither scores. There have been a whole lot of great players to come through the Cast Tech program. Jalen Thompson just adding to the list. There are a lot of talented guys who are hoping for one more football game to play next week. Robert. Well, those are five seniors that are on the top five, five of the top 100 in the state of Michigan. The number one, obviously, being Jalen Thompson, rated second overall, and Kamari Anderson. And that's a get for Grand Valley. When you get the 44th player in the state ranked heading to, to a GLIAC school, that's a, that's a win. And we, you know, we've had a chance at NIU to watch him, and he's going to be a nice collegiate player as well. So, yeah, there's, they got some talent on the, on the field. You don't see the, the, the three and four stars at Belvo like we've seen in the past, but they have a bunch of really good high school players. Don't get me wrong. They just don't have the dudes outside that we've seen come through over the past three years. Yeah, they got some young talent, Rob. Yeah, and they're young. Yeah, uh, young guys, but not a lot of the seniors we saw last year. Mumfield brings down another high snap. And this leads to another great run for Sean Hodges. First down. Well, sometimes bad things can help you out. They lead to good things. And I think the snap being high, it throws the timing off. And by the time he gives it to Hodges, the defense is kind of rushed up the field to the right side. And it creates a lane. And he's able to just bounce it and pick up a nice game. It's funny. You saw Belbo in the start of the game really running the ball effectively. And Cass has slowed that down. And vice versa, Cass struggling a little bit running the ball. Now you see Sean Hodges really getting his foot and going. Coming up on midfield here. homefield has got two wide receivers near side of your screen. Hodges again, right side again, first down again, flag again. And I think this run is coming back. Uh, it's, they call it Corey Sadler. I didn't see the beginning of it, but the end of it, it was a great block. He had his hands in. He was just driving the defense back. Now, I didn't see the beginning. Holding. Holding. On offense, number one. Two yards. Two yards. We play. Well, a couple yeah. looks at here. You see how? It, yeah, he's got the hand outside. You just you can't do that. So that's a good call by the officials. I stand corrected. And that's an easy call when they get it outside. If you get that inside, you're gonna, they're not going to call you. But you can't grab on the edge. Yeah, he's trying to block Yarborough. He's a big dude, 6'2", 200 round. So Sadler shifts back to the slot. And 
Now they motion him. Give it to Hodges. Similar look in action right side, and he pops another one. The patience for Sean Hodges on every run, just setting up the blocks. It's a beautiful thing to watch. And you have to be patient because they're going to pull, and you got to let those big guys get in front of you. You're going to see, let it go. You're going to see some pulling from the left side to the right, both linemen. So you got to wait. And if you get there too quick, you're going to run into their backs. They create the traffic jam, and then you take advantage and kind of get in the get on the shoulder and pass it. <laughs> Not that I've ever done that. The thing, too, with all these guys pulling, every single starter for Cass Tech in the O-line is at least 280 pounds. Those are dancing bears. They move out there. They average 6'3", 280 across the front five offensively. The back is now Summerer. They get it to the sophomore. Cameron slipped a tackle and used his big body to lean ahead. Adrian Walker finally got him down, but not after a gain of seven or eight. That is a big sophomore. He's six feet, 205. Cameron also plays on the Castec baseball team. Had a rushing touchdown against West Bloomfield in round one of the playoffs. Castec to get here has beaten West Bloomfield, Southfield A&T, and Macomb, Dakota. Three of the top teams of the state. And they also beat Brother Rice and Detroit King in the two weeks prior to the playoffs, just to make it. Hodges the run. This one not quite as big of a chunk as before, but it's still a first down carry. As a couple of Tigers wrangle him backward. Adrian Walker, the first man to him again. Timeout called by Dewan Time Rogers. Out. Time this is out. the third Time defensive out. timeout for Belleville. When I say defensive, when they're playing defense, obviously. The third time when they're starting to get gouged a little bit and they're, they're going to take a timeout. And I have no problem. I know people say, oh, you, you need them at the end of the game. Well, obviously, sometimes that's going to hurt you. But if you get down three touchdowns because you're not taking the slow drives down, what good is that three timeouts in the end if you're down three scores? So you, if you feel you can make some adjustments to, to stem the tide a little bit, go ahead and do it. And part of the reason, Rob, that uh, Belleville just called a timeout is the offensive line for Cass Tech is really just starting to lead on them as this game goes along. Yes. I'm not a big imposing your will guy. What I'm a big, and you've heard this before, Evan, is wearing people down. Yeah where you keep leaning on leaning on It's not like your will. Like, if you can impose your will to happen the first play of the game, but you can't. What you do is you tie your bodies. Those defensive line, remember, they got to try to hold you off, and they got to run to the ball every play. Offense, you can kind of make your block sometimes. You see the play going down the field, and you go, oh, good job. You clap for your teammate. But defense, you got to run. You got to keep chasing that ball so you're a little more tired, and you got a 280-pound, 300-pound lineman pushing you the whole game. It's, it starts to beat you up a little bit. It looks like a good look there. I like, man, they got some good-looking bodies up there. And these aren't just like, sometimes we've, we've done teams where they got three, two 300-pounders, but they're quite large, not the same body style, let's say, as you're seeing here. These are some good-looking athletic long bodies. Yeah, again, when you, when you look at the starters for Cass Tech from left to right in terms of pounds, 305, 305, 295, 255, 280. And they move. Mumfield talks to Hodges, the back on his right side. They give it to Sean, gave a stiff arm, and that flag is going to be for an offensive face mask. The ball came out late. Sadler fell on the football. Uh, Hodges is about to be called with the rare offensive face mask. Yeah, this is just the outside zone heading to the left. And a good job getting penetration. That's a young fella there. They really like number 44 in orange there. That's uh, Rashad Jones. And that's a live ball. And if it wasn't for Corey Sadler being Johnny on the spot, that's going to be a turnover. Now you live, you can, you can lose. They're going to tack this on to the play, I believe. So that's going to be, it's a, it may be a spot foul if they mark the 15 from the, Face master on the offense. 15 yards from the end of the run. Yep, tack it on. Still first down. So now down. This, kind of, this kind of changes everything. 
where you're cast and you're just pounding a ball and running, you know, you're running a lot of, little bit of zone, a lot of power outside. And now you, oh my Lord, you're 20, 35 you need for a first down. So, but you have to be smart. It's second and 35, so Belbo's going to be looking for you to put the ball in the air. If you can throw it, you can, oh, they moved it back to first down. Right, that was on the first down play. So you don't have to get 35 in this play because I guarantee there's not a lot of 35-yard plays in coaches' playbooks. We'll try to get some of it back with Summerer. They don't get a whole heck of a lot of it back. He tried to right and gained a couple of yards on the play. Belbo doing a great job all night rallying to the football. That time, Andre McDade, 51, the first man in there. Yeah, the offensive line that time, they got stalemate a little bit, but this big line that we were talking about, it, they're really doing a nice job in getting out and pulling. They were getting bubbled a little bit early in the game, and it's amazing when you, we did the numbers, how close these two offensive lines are. You look at it, both 6'3", 288, 291. So the defensive line's giving up a little bit of bulk to those big fellas up front. That is a large grocery bill for a bunch of parents growing up. In Sadler's hands. Trying to make magic. Wasn't much operating on that play as Houston was hanging on for dear life on the outside. Yeah, I think we almost had another face mask. Now remember, this doesn't have to be the face mask. If you grab the edge of the, edge of the helmet, it's the same penalty. Let's get a look here. Sadler's so shifty. Yeah, it would, it would have been, a, I think, only a five-yarder if it they did call it more of a grasp. He didn't, like, grab and twist the head as much, but the official of that side, his defense, he's on the other side by the sidelines, and he didn't have a good view of it. And so it's, it's just one, you can't see them all, all the time. Sometimes you miss them. Belleville late getting a man off the field. They do get him off in time. Mumfield was trying to hand it to Hodges, and that play was a disaster right from the jump. A whole bunch of bodies in there. Jeremiah Beasley, one more time. And the penalty, Rob, as you thought it might, really destroyed this drive before it could get started. Yeah, and this, the timing, everything was off. It was almost like they were trying to run a screen. The game through so fast, the defensive line. And Sean Mumfield was going to the sideline and said, hey, fellas, I'll play guard for a while if you want to come back here and stand when no one hits anyone <laughs> because I don't care who you are back there. That's trouble. you gotta, you got to slow that those black jerseys down up front. So a nice stand by Belva. This is still a one-score game, even though it seems like Cass is pulling away for some reason because they've had the ball so much lately. It's a one-possession game. Mumfield to punt again. This ball going to take a good bounce. Keep on rolling. Inside the 25 and down near the 20. Two. For a couple of excellent offenses, neither is scored in a second half that means everything. Dewan Rogers, the acting head coach for Belleville. And we tell you more about the young man when you come on back. Dewan Rogers, the 27 year old who has a bright coaching future ahead of him. Right now, he is focusing as the acting head coach for Belleville to try to come back, get a win, and take this team to the state championship game. The wrinkle to this game is Dewan Rogers played at Cast Tech with all of those guys. A defensive backfield that won a couple of state championships in 2011 and 2012. They called themselves the Midnight Crew. Every single one of them played Division I college football. And the guy on the far right side of your screen, Jordan Lewis, uh, is playing for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, and the interesting thing is they, they uh, stayed friends all the way through it. All four of them were in the NFL training camp at the same time. Oh, and by the way, Rob, Dewan Rogers, the acting head coach for Belleville, uh, he was teammates with the associate head coach and offensive line guy for Cast Tech, David Dawson, who also played in Michigan. Wow, that in high school they were teammates, and now they're coaching against each other. I remember, I remember Coach Rogers at Toledo. Uh, he was a good player. I was so glad when he left because he was a ball hawk and a physical, physical safety. You can see that kind of translate to this Belleville Tiger team, the physicality they play with. This Tigers right now are trying to tie up the ball game. Underwood gets down a high snap, hands it off to Colby Reed, and this will end up being a pretty solid gain on first down. 
Now we're going to look at the colors of the blue and gold, which I'm not a big fan of because of the Rockets and being the Eastern Michigan alum as a master's program and doing play by or analyst work. But he was a player now for the Rockets. You can see two time all max selection. Just tough, tough kid. And had, you know, had a cup of coffee in the NFL a little bit. Now he's pursuing the coaching avenue. Underwood keeps, and he is tackled in the open field, lowering the shoulder and making the tackle. That will set up third down on the play as Castec rallies to the ball. First time today that Underwood has had a design run. Well, that's a read. I mean, he is going to read it. It's uh, he's, he's reading the defensive end. They bring the jet motion, and if the end widens a little bit, he's going to pull it and keep it up, run the quarterback power. And that time he read it true and he pulled it and came up short. Good job by Cass. I mean, when you fear he might fool him when he finally does pull it for the first time. Third down short. Colby Reed trying to get there. He's close on the initial indication. Richmond, the first man in there, and Reed did a remarkable chop getting away from him. And he gets hit about a yard and a half, two yards deep in the backfield. And he's not the thumper. He's more of the, the quick, shifty back. A nice job not letting the square hit by Caleb Richmond get him. He's able to sidestep a little bit and then kind of, re, kind of gather himself and bury it in there and get a little push in the line and move the chains. It wasn't pretty, but effective. Daniel Gatter finally the man who made the tackle, but too little too late. Underwood throws. Signs catch. And signs brought down. Spin it ahead. Awfully close to the first down. Alex Graham on the tackle, but it is another first down for Belleville. Well, they've shown the same action in the backfield. They run the power action, which we've seen a lot. But this time he pulls it and just throws it to the outside. It's kind of like an RPO look where they fake the power, and then he just kind of flicks it out and lets Symes do the rest. Symes caught the touchdown for Belleville that gave him a 14-0 lead. All right, back to Kevin Symes. Find it up into a bunch of Cast Tech bodies up to near midfield. It's going to be second down short. Parker and Richmond combined now the tackle. Kevin Symes is one fast guy. He runs a 4-5-40. And in warmer climates, hopefully in the spring, he's on Belleville's track team. He runs the 100, the 200. He's on the relay team, and he's also a long jumper. snap and Underwood has to fall on it man these are just drive killers but the fact that you get a five yard penalty you get the down over you get a, a snap that rolls back you're losing three yards and the down it puts you in a third and five so let's see now they've had they were having success running the ball but now third and five it kind of makes me odd looking for signs signs really been the, the go-to receiver and they, they they got the one long shot early on to Jalen Johnson but Simon has been the money guy. He's in the slot to the right, number 12. High snap. Beasley picks it up. He needs a magic trick. And there's no pixie dust on this play. Brought down from behind by Getter. And consecutive poor snaps mean it's fourth down with... The Belleville Tiger down on the play. We talk about a drive that just disintegrates. You see the low snap, they lose three yards on a third down of five. And you gotta remember, that's a six foot three quarterback and that's well over the top of his head. And Beasley picks up, tries to make something out of nothing, Evan, but there's really nothing there. And they're gonna be forced to punt from deep in their own end. 12 minutes for a lifetime for both of these football teams. Belleville wants a trip back to Fort Field to defend their crown. Castec trying to get there, the fourth. Cast Tech, as it hit the middle of October, was 4-3 and three and staring no spot in the playoffs down in the face. But they beat King. They beat Brother Rice just to make the playoffs. Then they went to West Bloomfield and had a dominant second half, won that game. Then they avenged a defeat against Southfield A&T, 
won that game round two of the playoffs. And then in the regional final last week, in a game that they trailed at halftime, they outscored Dakota 21-0 in the fourth quarter to earn their spot here tonight. And Rob, it's the same story again tonight. They're down 14-0, yeah. and now they've got the lead going and, into and the fourth. And that's why if you're Cass Tech, you've got to be comfortable. You're comfortable in this position. Belbo hasn't been here. They haven't trailed in the fourth quarter to anyone. And you, know, you talk about the avenge loss against a t also against King. King beat them early in the year, and they came back and beat them. So it's kind of the who's who of high school football in Michigan. They're uh, making mincemeat out of them right now, going through heading to this Belbo game. So let's see how this one turns in the fourth. Lane's kick, a bit <laughs> unorthodox, but uh, it works out. Sadler elects to back up, and this drive is going to start for Cass Tech at the 23. Okay, I think they're actually <laughs> moving the football at this point. That's like that old clip in baseball. I forget the third baseman who got down on the foul line and blew the ball out, right, of, out right, of play. Right. Now, this is a low line. It's kind of a rugby style. What's nice is, you know, it doesn't go end over end. It goes pretty much side, oblong sideways, and then it just hits and rolls and goes. And, and Sadler makes the right decision. If it was a nice big hop, you grab it. But anything that's awkward and... A skew like that was, let it go. Hey, they say beauty's in the eye of the beholder, am I right? Yep. All right, Cass, right now, they're looking to put together a big drive, put some points on the board, eat some clock, and put himself in the driver's seat to get to forward field. Keep in mind that timeout situation as we go down the stretch here. Each side's got two a pop. Mumfield with Hodges to his left. Get it to Sean. And he didn't gain anything. In fact, he lost three yards. Belleville rallying and getting Sean Hodges down. Camden Weaver, the first guy to him. Well, Sean Hodges, over 100 yards in the game. It's been a tougher 100 now. You know, he's had some huge games over 250 and a couple times in the past three weeks, but that's tough. Tonight, it's been uh, hard fought. And they run that power play again, but as we said early, with the bubble, with the penetration, it's all get congested, and he tries to cut back, and good pursuit on the backside, squeezing it down. Right back to Sean Hodges. Real estate left side. Sean Hodges first down. Rinse, repeat. Well, this is power. They've run this entire night. They're going to pull the guard backside, and they're going to lead through. Okay, get ready. Pause it right here. Pause it. You see it. You see him sealing here. And this is the H-back who's going to get outside. All right, let it go. And watch Corey Sather, number one. My arms are up. I'm not holding anyone now. I'm, and that's smart. You know, maybe he felt he was starting to lose his guy a little bit at the point of attack. But sometimes you've got to give up. You don't want to get a block in the back or a hold. So they lose three on first down. Sean Hodges makes up for it on second. Drive up near the 40 for Cass Tech. Right back to Hodges. Run and left. Spinning his way up near the 45 and across it. Very good gain on first down. Man, this Cass Tech team, Rob, is like a bad guy in a movie. They just get stronger as the thing goes along. No, the bad guy gets beat in the end, doesn't he? Well, he gets better, or she oh. gets better and better throughout the movie. Okay. Well, they're <laughs> they are getting better offensively. We saw the tide turn a little bit because in the first half, Belleville was running the ball really well early in the game, and they've struggled since. Where Cass couldn't get anything going, and all of a sudden, they just keep at it. And I, I like the patience of, of Marvin Rushing. Keep, you know what you do. You know your identity. Your running team, keep running the ball. Guess who? Hodges. And this time, Belleville rallies to the football and frankly puts Cass Tech in a situation they haven't been in very much all day. Third down as Adrian Walker made the tackle. Third down and three. You're near midfield. This is another one of those, if you come close, it's tempting to go for it. With that defensive front, those big fellas up front for Belleville, I, I would go ahead and punt. But I'm looking at right now, you're going to see either power or counter. Counter, they're going to pull two linemen from the backside to the play side. If they run power, you'll see the tight end. Usually it's uh, Kamari Anderson will go in motion along with one guard lead taking you right to the ball. And we got some confusion here. We're going to see a timeout maybe. I would take a timeout in this situation. 
Play clock is at four. They get it off with one. Mumfield keeps, stumbles ahead. He is short. I, you know, I saw uh, Dewan Rogers was signaling for a timeout. He was running down the side, could not get the attention. Could not get the attention of the official, so the play ends up going. Now they're going to actually go for it, Evan, or maybe try to give a taste of their own medicine back to Belleville and go with a hard count. Well, remember as well, Mumfield's your punter, so you can put him out there and make him sweat. Fourth down one, what decision do you make? They'll go for it. No, I won't. don't know if that was the decision they wanted to make. Belleville gets the stop. Andre Thomas. 100%. That is a mix-up. That ball was not supposed to be snapped. And the center snaps the ball because you tell Mumphrey was not expecting it and no one was moving. None of the linemen were trying to make a block. The backs were standing there. And that's just, that's just a mix-up. And let's see now how Cass can respond. We're going to take a look here in real time and see. Mumfield's clapping. But he's not expecting the, bot, the ball to come. He's looking hard clap, hard clap. He looks there, hard clap, fake. Oh, here comes the ball. Because Hodges wasn't going. The line wasn't going. Now, I'm not saying they weren't going to go for it. It seems like he snatched it too soon. You see the left guard, O'Brien, was just still in the stance. So either it was supposed to be snapped, but not to like the third clap, where he, he, he snapped it on the second. And that's a huge turnover of downs for Belleville. Pitch, Beasley with a freshly taped ankle. Parker swirls him down, but not after a very good gain of seven on first down. Jeremiah Beasley, who ran for two touchdowns last week, hasn't run for one yet tonight, but he's run for 23 on the year. Underwood under center for the first time tonight. And that draws a flag. A lot of pointing. I think the flag was thrown by the umpire who stands by the linebackers. Belleville might be trying to say that one of those times where they try to simulate a snap, maybe they give a clap or a... Dead ball. Ball start. Number 55. Five yards. Penalty. First down. It's tough, Evan. You come out, you get a nice positive with a six, seven yard gain on first down. Now a lot of that gets washed back because you're gonna be in a second down and eight after the five yard penalty. I like that first play getting back. I remember they ran that toss to Beasley. They kind of got him to the edge and let him kind of square his shoulders and run downhill. That's a 215 pound back. I like his chance of breaking some arm tackles not take the play. Underwood back to Beasley. Jeremiah running left. Jeremiah Beasley, first down. Matthew Nickens got him out of bounds, but it's tough to get Jeremiah Beasley down in the open field. You're going to see right here. Let's keep an eye on Anderson. He gets down inside a little bit. He's going to get sealed, which allows Beasley to get to the edge. Let it go. He gets mugged a little bit. He squeezes down. He gets kind of pinned inside. And then he's able to, he, he being busy, he's able to bounce it to the edge. But he came down really flat, Anderson, and a good job by the pulling guard, just kind of pinning him in and allowing Beasy to get to the edge. Pitch signs, and Cass Tech was not fooled. Thompson and Parker, the two combining to sniff that play out for a loss of a half a yard. Yeah, you got Thompson, number 55. You're going to run power or counter at him. I just want you to keep an eye. He's the right defense. He's going to come into play. He's going to take on Jackson, the guard pulling, and he stands him right up in the hole, and he, you see him 55 coming off. And if you can't get a sustain a kick out or at least keep him shield, you're in trouble. And that time, Thompson won the battle. Let's see who wins the war. Give again. Beasley. No, Caleb Richmond, hello. 
And now, Rob, curiously, Belleville has not had Bryce Underwood, the best sophomore quarterback in America, throw it once on this drive. He's probably going to have to throw it here. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with that. I, I think you're a running football team. Belleville, the Tigers are. Underwood can throw it if he needs to, but it's so much safer running. What happens there, they get caught on a run-through by Richmond, does a great job of reading quickly. He just runs through. No one gets a hat on him. He's able to get to Beasley, clean it, and make the play for a loss. But now a third down and 14, it puts you in a much more pass-first situation. Keep an eye up top. You got, a little, you, you got Corey Sadler, number one, on an island. Play action. Underwood, throwback screen. Jeremiah Beasley meets a couple of technicians. Graham and Richmond bringing him down. And now you got a decision to make. Dewan Rogers facing a fourth down. You want to know if you have a fast defense? This is how you can tell. When you throw a screen, it's set up pretty well. It looks like it's going to be there. Boy, all of a sudden, here comes, you beat the block of the lineman. You see Sean Hodges, number two, getting up in there in white. And the rest of the guys flow to the ball quickly. And what looks like it's going to be a huge play in the screen game. One missed block, this great pursuit. Not, 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 ends up being about a six or seven yard game with sets up a fourth and eight. That is a injured technician. T tough to tell who it is. That's Hodges down. Hopefully that's just a cramp for Sean. The guy who's going both ways and playing his heart out. A senior laying everything on the line. We thought this would be a good one, and it is a good one. Come on back. All righty, here we go. Four and a half to go. Belleville down by seven. Fourth down and about seven, Rob. What do you call it? Well, the first thing, let's start with the center exchange. And uh, you get Devin Gardner props. He, he sent me a text. He said they put him under, under center this last drive, which they have because of the ineffectiveness and the bad high snaps. So... DeWan Rogers saying, you know, I don't want that, but I, is he going to be under I got to leave him in the shotgun here on a fourth down and eight. He's got to see. If you're the young quarterback and you're not used to coming under center and you're trying to drop and see what's going on down the field and you haven't done that, that's tough. So leave him back. He's got to tell your center, hey, we need a snap. One good snap, fourth and eight, make a snap. Clean snap. Underwood clean pocket. High throw incomplete. He wanted Jalen Johnson, and he could not find him on just his fourth pass attempt of the second half. Yeah, they, 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 went, they went to the snap on, on shotgun, and Gordon does a good job getting it back. And this is on the cue. you got to make this throw. It's only about a 15-yard pass out of the arms from the pocket until the sidelines. He has time. A great job. What, look at that pocket. Throws it. Just could you make that catch? Yeah, it's tough. Because it's coming hot, and he knows it. You take a look right there. He knows it. I, he knows that he missed that. But now he's got to count on his teammates, his defense, getting the ball back, let him redeem himself next time they get it. Still two timeouts for Belleville here. But something, frankly, Rob, to keep in mind, the acting head coach, Dewan Rogers, is 27. The head coach for Cass Tech, Marvin Rushing, yeah, it's his second year, but he was also on Thomas Wilcher's staff for forever. This man is experienced and we'll see how coaching plays a part down the stretch and the decisions that they make. Summerer, first carry, and that barely gains an inch. Ronald Jackson makes the tackle. Well, that defensive line's coming to play now. They're, they know what's on them. They know they gotta get that ball back very quick up front, very physical. They get a nice push. A little different look. No H back that time. Just a basic tight end. They had uh, 11 personnel in the game. One tight end, one running back. But nothing was there. They just handed it. was just trying to run zone to the st weak short side of the field and no room. Bleeding as much of that play clock as Castec possibly can. There is eight seconds on the play clock. Snap it with two, give it to two, and Sean Hodges still trying to get as much as he can, but Belleville gets a bunch of bodies to the football. Camden Weaver the first there, and Belleville burns one of the final two timeouts they've got. Another injured tech technician on the field. 
Looks like one of the linemen this time. Injury timeout. Injury timeout. Officials timeout. Officials timeout. One of the offensive linemen down for Cass Tech. Well, there's just not much here. You watch point of attack. Ronald Jackson takes 52 takes and Black takes on the pulling guard. And that and that's looks like who's still down. Is that William O'Brien, number 52, 6'3, 305 pound senior? He still remains on the ground. That's Ronald Jackson bringing it at the point of attack, really stalemating it and doing a nice job of separating from the pulling guard to help get in on the tackle. William, the senior, has done a great job this year for Cast Tech going back and forth between the left side and the right side of the line. He actually started this year as the right guard, and they've moved him to the left side as the season's gone along. You got to look at some stats up on the scoreboard here. You know, pretty even. Once again, the, the biggest stat in this game has been the turnovers. You know, three turnovers to one, and that's just not good. I mean, you can't, it's tough to win when you lose that turnover battle. And there's nice seeing William O'Brien getting up and walking off on his own power. Third down 10. Cast Tech coming back on the field. By the way, Belleville was not charged with the timeout there because it was an official's injury timeout. Clock ticking toward three to go. Third down, 10, Cast Tech. Play action for Mumfield. Long throw, tipped, incomplete. Oh man, James Robinson, what a play. Wow, unbelievable, that's almost a pick. He goes up with one hand, and that's just a great job dropping into the flat by James Robinson getting underneath coverage because that's going to be completed, and it's going to be, might get a first down play of the game right there. James Robinson, number 11, you're going to see in the flat, if this gets over the top, you got Corey Sadler getting the ball one-on-one. -on -one. I like one's odds of winning that. One in white is a handful when you got him in open space. Crowd coming to life before a pivotal fourth down punt. You know, it also an incomplete pass because Robinson makes a play. It stops the clock. You don't have to burn a timeout. And the play stopped. The play clock was at zero. Dead ball. Dead ball. The left game. game. On the offense, number 16. Five yards, fourth down. That's not a meaningless five yards. Eh? You want to put the punt back yeah. even closer to the goal line. I set up a return in this situation. I'm Belbo. I don't try to block it and, and chance getting a roughing the punter. I just be care careful, set up the return. And this punt for Mumfield checks up. So Belleville gets a couple of extra yards. They'll start in plus territory. And now a message from the Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Returning AZ Plan lessees can order an F-150 today and lease it for $2.99 a month for 24 months. Only at your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers. Think Ford first. After that punt, there was a, a little bit of extracurricular activity going on there. Belleville's sideline sprinting over to make sure there isn't an extra 15 yards tacked on after this play. There was some pushing and shoving. Arvin rushing a cool customer on that sideline for Cass Tech. Kind of like this coach right here. He's my hero. He ran about a 4-3 going across the field. He grabbed two of his guys by the shirt and pulled them out of there quickly. That's smart. Don't let young, young kids can make mistakes. Don't give them the opportunity to. Coach got some scoots now. Also, by the way, that coach was Clock wearing a short sleeve. He set at 255. 255. That coach that Rob was just giving love to, he was wearing a short sleeve shirt in the first half. He is no longer wearing a short sleeve shirt. Yeah, he's, he's like a raptor. He's learning quickly. It's too cold. Yeah. Grab him. Grab him. Let's go home. Playtime is over. 
so here you go. 2.55 remaining. Belleville has two timeouts left. And Bryce Underwood, the sophomore quarterback who many think is one of the finest in America, leads the troops on the field. Brings down the snap. Gives to Colby Reed. Jitterbugging his way right. He gets a couple of yards. Another tackle for Caleb Richmond. I'm going to tell you from experience of watching this for 30 years, 40 years, high school football, two and a half minutes in high school goes quickly. You don't see the effectiveness and how efficient college teams are in the hurry up and, high, and pro teams are. This is a different animal. They need a touchdown. There's no field goal here. Clock tick, tick, ticking. Coming up on two minutes to go. Take, to take a shot. Underwood throws. Pass juggled and incomplete. Best thing that could happen. Best thing that could happen, that he dropped the ball. If that ball is caught coming out of the backfield, is that a golden, 22? Yep. If that ball is caught, that's going to be a one-yard loss, and the clock's going to continue to go. Injury timeout. Official that's Sean time. Hodges? He's been everywhere. Number two, is that? I think that's, that may be 11. Oh, Alex oh that's Alex Graham. They, if he's cramping, they need him in this situation because... That ball is going to be airborne here quickly, and I'm talking airborne vertically. They're going to take a shot. Let's hit a break. Let's take a breath. 2-10 remaining. Third down and eight for Belleville. Their state title defense starting to slip away. Coming down the stretch in one of the high school football games of the year. By the way, everybody, if you're waiting on Pistons, that is coming up as soon as our game ends. Mickey and Tim are standing by to get you ready for Pistons Lakers, second game in a back-to-back -back at Crypto.com Arena in L.A. All right, Rob, third down. Bryce Underwood has only thrown five passes in the second half. You think any throws here? Yeah, yeah, this is a no-brainer. He's got to throw the ball. It's third down and nine. I'm not saying it could be a screen, but I'm looking for they got tight end. They got an H back and maybe do some crossing routes in the middle. Keep things simple. Try to get the yardage they need. They'll keep it with Bryce Underwood. What a time for that call! The man who rarely runs with the biggest run of the year for Belleville. Well, sometimes you keep things in your back pocket. And you wait for the right moment to pull them out. And this is it. This is a read. And you see 15, Anderson, he widens with the jet motion. That means the Q's going to pull it. And Underwood pulls it and gets up the field. Now it's all here. And if you're Cast Tech, you've got to try to manage the clock to save yourself a little bit of time, possibly if they score and go for two. And succeed. Yeah, there's no hurry now if you're Belleville. You, you want that. Now, there's nine on the play clock. You do want to get this off. It's a two. They get it off and give to Beasley. Jeremiah Beasley stops short of the goal line. See, if I'm Cass, I take a timeout right here. It's not going to hurt you to stop the clock. I would try to save some time on that clock to give you an opportunity here. If they go for two. Now, granted, if they just kick the extra point and convert it, we have a tie. Underwood keeps Bryce Underwood. Yes! Touchdown! It has to make you wonder if this Belleville Tiger team gets through here and gets to Ford Field. If you will see more of Bryce Underwood running the football, and Belleville, I think, is going to take a time out here to discuss not only if they go for two, but what play they use for the two-point conversion. And we're going to look here. We've seen Underwood tote the ball a few different times in this drive. Defensive end comes down. You pull it. You get to the edge. 19 knew what he was doing. So great job. Using what you have and when you need it. So Underwood scores, and here comes the extra point try with a flag. Dead ball. Dead ball. The layup game. Offense. Five yard retry. 
Well, this just made the extra point all the more interesting. Dewan Rogers is hot. I think he thinks they should have reset the play clock here. He's going to talk to the side judge. He's probably telling maybe, Evan, that he called timeout. Yeah, I, I'm trying to read lips. I think that's what he was saying. And they're asking right now, the white hat, you see him asking, did he call timeout? Did he tell you he wanted a timeout? We all wait with bated breath here to see. It makes the uh, shorter kick five yards longer if they can choose to kick it. Timeout. Timeout. Time Bill, Bill. But he needs to tell us, was it before the delay? I mean, he's taking a timeout now? That's no good. So he should, now obviously, official meant timeout before the play clock ran out. Do you think during this timeout, DeWan Rogers is going to rethink the decision to kick the extra point at all? No, I. Now, where are they going to mark the ball? They're still standing like they're going to mark it on the eight, seven, or eight yard line. And the look kicker, at them. And the kicker, Braden Lane, is still warming up to kick, by the way. Because according to the official, they took a timeout now. So they're going to be kicking from the seven or eight. Look at Coach Rogers and Coach Rushing. Shout out to Jeff Thomas on the field getting a clarification here on whether they're going to spot the ball. Everyone outside in our crew, God bless them for braving the elements tonight. We appreciate them. I mean, put yourself in the shoes here of Dewan Rogers, a guy who was a great college player, coached collegially at Iowa State, had to move home because of a family situation. He is the acting head coach, and that man's heart rate has got to be going through the roof right now. He was in a He's, he's looking and saying, man, these games are a lot further or bigger leads when I was an assistant coach all year. <laughs> he says, I get in this, I get thrown into the fire, and we're coming down to an extra point to try to keep this game going to tie it and maybe get it to overtime. They did not get the timeout before the penalty. So, so the this is a longer PAT. So yep. the White Hat was right. When he said timeout, he, that's when he called it. This is shades of Adam Venateri trying to clear some room to kick it. The holder is Johnson. The snapper is Hurst. Braden Lane, the kicker. The left-footed sophomore. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is right down Main Street. Oh, still a minute four left. Still a lot of time left now. And those you, two timeouts. Yes, and you got, you got some athletes on the perimeter like Corey Sadler. We saw what he did with the interception, two timeouts, but you can't dink and dunk. Now you need to get to field goal range. We talked and we talked about Sanchez's range, and this is pretty solid. Braden Lane, kicker and punter, plays soccer for the excellent club team Wolves in Metro Detroit. That thing was right down the pipe. You're doing your research now. You put on a soccer reference. I, I, he did some work this week. That's good. I do have a brother who plays at Detroit Mercy. Anyway. Okay. So, the thing I wonder, Rob, here is, yeah, you got 64 seconds, two timeouts. That feels like an eternity in high school football. And we'll see how Belleville plays this kickoff. But the fact of the matter is, Cast Tech is a running team. Can you run it down the field? Yeah. Do you have enough time to do it? We'll find out. Uh, let's not forget, LaShawn Mumphy was... He said, you know, he committed to Ferris State. So he, Tony Nice is not going to recruit a quarterback that can't throw. He can throw. Does he throw as well as Bryce Underwood? No, probably not. But he can throw. He's a three-year starter. He can put the ball up, and he's got some guys outside and, and got a tight end as well that can make plays. But I just think they got to try to get the ball to one. I've been begging all night to see Corey Sadler get the ball, whether it's in space, he can run by you. I just think he's been really underused here. Now maybe we saw pull Bryce Underwood's running ability out towards that last drive. Maybe we'll see number one coming to play here in white for cast 10.
They've tried this muddle kickoff many times tonight. He kicks away. Here's number one. The super freshman Corey Sadler. Number one in green and white's got room. Corey Sadler tackled at the 20. That man is a magician. Well, Cast Tech couldn't get him the ball in their offense. They didn't try enough. But Belbo helps him all by kicking the ball to him. And that's just a mistake from the get-go because number one is special. And we knew it. And now they're putting themselves in a great situation. Now, I still think they're probably five yards, maybe seven yards away from a legitimate chance for Sanchez on a night like this of a field goal. But you still have 52 seconds and two timeouts. Dathan Bryson, 28, made the tackle, which may have saved the game for Belleville. Give Hodges. Jeremiah Beasley, the tackle, loss of a yard. Got a timeout on the field. You see George Sanchez staying warm on the sideline. Sophomore kicker, Rob, who Cast Tech's coaching staff loves. Hasn't mixed an extra point yet tonight. He's three of six on the field goals this year. And again, that long of 35 yards. So if you're doing the math with us here, it's right about in his range now. If you're the coaching staff for Cast Tech, again, how many yards you want to get here to feel yeah, a little bit you, better? You want to score. Uh, you want a touchdown. You don't want to come down to a sophomore kicker. Sophomore kicker? Sophomore, yes. Yeah. A sophomore kicker in Sanchez to win or lose the game. This is not the NFL. This is not college. This is high school football on a low teen wind chill night where that ball doesn't have much pop in it. I don't think you can be conservative and just hand the ball off. I think you've got to get Mumfield outside the pocket, a little run pass option, and try to get a chunk play. Try to get down inside the 10-yard line, 5-yard line. Look at that big tight end, Kamari Anderson. They've used him a couple times tonight. Even run a jet sweep and give the ball to Corey Sadler. Even if they get penetration, he can make something out of nothing quickly. But I, I don't think you just hand the ball to Hodges up the middle. We saw what happened on the first down. They end up losing a yard. No fault of his own. Right back to Hodges. Sean Hodges with room. Sean Hodges! Did he stay up? No, they say he is out of bounds, but that run puts Cast Tech in prime field goal position to win the game. Well, they abandoned running the ball inside on the inside zone and end up running it to the edge, getting outside, and he definitely steps out of bounds. Good job. It looks like he steps up maybe back on about the seven. Now they, they mark him down on the three. Now at the, at the, four, at the finals, we're going to have... We'll be privy to replay. Yep. And coaches challenge and a bunch of good stuff coming in this year. First down goal. Mumfield keeps. LaShawn Mumfield is short. Jeremiah Warren the tackle. Well, they, they tried doing what Belleville did with success when the quarterback kept it. Faked Hodges going around the left edge. The only problem is you're running to the short side of the field. You're on the left hash. Not a lot of room to get that outside power play going. Mumfield pulls, but those guys in front, I've talked about them all night, and they're solid. They've won most of the battles inside. Weaver and Warren, the two W's inside, 55 and 50 and black, have really done a nice job. So now you're on a five-yard line. I don't want to leave this up to a kicker. And Rob, I, I apologize, I don't mean to cut you off, but, but a huge moment here. That was Cass Tech who just called the timeout. Now this makes it all the more interesting. Yeah, well, you're 25 seconds left here. How much you trust your quarter? It, it is second, second down, correct? So if you get a sack, okay, let's say you try to throw here and you get a sack, you will have time to get up, get gather your troops, and spike the ball. So you'd still get a field goal attempt out of it. It would not cost you the game with 25 seconds. So that doesn't, so throwing is not out of the question. And if you run the ball, then, you know, you're, you're going to eat most of the clock with no timeouts, and you can be kind of trying to rush your field goal team out there. So I, I'm looking for Cass to try to throw it. 
Marvin rushing burns that last timeout. The ball is inside the five. Second down goal, 25 seconds left. Senior quarterback LaShawn Mumfield has a lot of wrinkles right now. Did he bring Sadler in motion or Sadler? Did he get him involved? Give Hodges. He is not no. in. Yeah, that's all right. You got to spike the ball. That's what we talked about. You have plenty of time. You don't have to rush it. But you got to be under center if you're going to spike it. They are snapping it out of the gun. That's a penalty, I thought, in high school. I thought you couldn't spike it out of the gun. I thought you'd be under center. Huh. Here we go. Number 80 in green and white. George Sanchez, the man of the moment. The sophomore kicker who is three for six on field goals this year. He Let's makes see. this. Cass Tech is on to Ford Field. Let's see if Belbo literally ices him tonight. George is walking onto the field wearing the warmest gloves he's got. Aztec has got to Delay. get an extra body onto the field. Delay of game. Are you kidding me? Oh, my goodness. Wow. Now you're pushing it pretty much. It would be about a 28, 29-yard. We're getting close to the edge of George Sanchez's range. The longest he's made this year, 35 yards. Mumfield, the holder. And there's the final timeout for Belleville. But I'm going to tell you right now, props to Dewan Rogers. He didn't use his timeout to ice him. He waited. He saw that Cass was not ready to kick it, and he let him take the penalty. Now he knew they are going to have time to kick it. He used that timeout. Heads up by Dewan Rogers. This football game has lived up to everything we wanted it to be. The defending state champions, the Belleville Tigers, trailed at half. They led 14 nothing. then they were down 21 to 14. They found a way to tie it with about two to go, but a battle-tested Cast Tech club, which had to win five straight games to get here. They had to win their final two regular season games just to have enough points to make the playoffs. They are a field goal away from their sophomore kicker, George Sanchez, from heading back to the state championship. All those off-season weights, all those runs, all those seven-on-sevens have come down to this kick. Low snap, put down, kick on the way, and it is no good. And I, I think in hindsight, Coach Rushing is going to look at this. This was mismanaged from the time when after the long run to get you inside the five-yard line, they struggled offensively. The rhythm was not there. The timing was not there. They wasted some really good opportunity to put this game away. And if you're cast right now, you're hoping it does not come back to haunt them. You're going to see pressure inside. The big paw to just deflect a little bit. So the Tigers needed to make a play, and they did. They did a great job getting pressure, and looks like we're going to be heading to OT. The acting head coach, Dewan Rogers, a Cass Tech alum, is trying to break technician hearts. And that man can breathe for the slimmest of seconds. Let's look ahead to the OT now. So they're going to start on the 10-yard line. Each team will get it. Uh, one will get to pick the end they go from. I'm trying to think who, Evan, you can watch this game with me, and I'm going to ask you first. I, I, have, I have an opinion on this, but who do you think would have the advantage from what you've seen with the offenses? Well, to me, Rob, a schematic advantage, I don't even think of that in overtime. I think of emotional advantage. 
I mean, how could Belleville not have the emotional wherewithal right now, right? They go yeah, down, score is, the touchdown, be, and they block the kick. But in real time, it's going to be probably five minutes before they're playing overtime, yeah. four to five minutes. So a lot of that's gone. I, I just think with now with the new wrinkle of Bryce Underwood showing that he has the ability to run the football, that changes everything. Even if he doesn't run it, it's going to open up other things because of the success they had on the last drive. I think Belbo has the advantage. And like you said, if any of the emotional emotion carries over, that, that can't hurt. But Cass, I mean, the penalty, the five-yard penalty, a delay. Just, I, I just thought they got way too conservative playing for a field goal where your, your kickers made three field goals all year. You're three for six. We are off to overtime in one of the high school football games of the year. A spot of the Division I state championship game is on the line, and Cass Tech and Belleville are still playing football. For those of you who have tuned on Valley Sports Detroit and you're looking for Pistons Live, we're going to get you there as soon as this game ends. We will get you out to L.A. for tip-off between Lakers and Pistons as soon as we can. So here's your overtime rules in high school. Each team, one timeout for the overtime. Timeouts don't carry over. Each one going to start at 10, and there are no mandatory two-point conversions. Well, you always want to go second, too because you can see what your opponent's done and you can adjust accordingly. Did it say that, yeah, Belbo looks... <laughs> I'm not sure if they deferred, but if they deferred, why would Cass be going first? So I'm not, all I know is it looks like Cass would be going on offense. The way he turned the two teams, he put Bel Belleville with their back to the end zone to the left here. Trying to get some Percy yeah, and you see Weaver and Warren walking out 50-55, so they're the defensive tackles. So... What do you think Marvin Rushing just told his team, Rob, after a chance to win the ball game, literally gets blocked at the buzzer? Memory loss. Clean your mind. It's done. Don't, don't fret about it. Don't pout about it. All you got to do is go in and get a score here and get a stop, and nothing's changed. We, it's like that kick was made. But you, you got to regroup your, your squad. And you're right, Evan. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do, to get them refocused on the task at hand. On your left... A man who's been coaching in some capacity at Cass Tech for two decades. On your right, a 27-year-old who is coaching as a head coach his third ever game. Off to overtime. Hodges right side. Sean Hodges, nothing. Look at the move of the big man. Jeremiah Warren, what quickness, what speed, getting vertically up the field, beats the block of the lineman, gets into the backfield, and he's running with Sean, Rod, with Sean Hodges, rather, getting into the backfield for a loss on first down, and that just gets you behind the chains, and that's the last thing you want to do in an overtime. James Robinson, the man who finally brought him down. Back it up to the 14. Second down goal for Cass Tech. I got to look outside. Mumfield the drop. There's your throw outside. Corey Sadler catch. Corey Sadler touchdown. What a time for his first of the night. When you have a weapon like number one, you, you got to use him. You just can't use him as a decoy all night. He's got man coverage outside. Just throw it out to him. He, he gets tackled, hit on the three, but he's able to just outpower the defensive back, get into the end zone, and 
That young man is a football player. Now, no problem on the field goal. Let's see if they can protect here to get the extra point. They haven't missed one yet tonight. And that one just sneaked over the bar. Ooh, that's a little bit of a wounded duck going over the top here. But here's Mumfield delivering the ball, getting it to Sadler with an opportunity. He gets hit, but is able to pull Houston into the end zone for the touchdown, and the extra point is through. Sean Mumfield not throwing a lot here tonight, but he's had a couple biggies. A touchdown to Anderson early on in the little tight end seam route, and then the throw to Sadler there. So now it's up to the defense of Cast Tech to try to hold the Tigers up. It's a defense that's played their hearts out during this eight-game winning streak. In the first four games of the year when Cast Tech went one and three, they gave up 119 combined points. During the last eight games before tonight, they gave up 82 combined points. They are the reason that Cast Tech has made it this far. And if they're going to keep on marching to Ford Field, they got to stand tall one more time. Underwood keep it again. Bryce Underwood navigating the traffic, trying to backpedal his way in. He is short, but not before he got darn close. You just wonder how this game may have unfolded differently if they would have run Underwood earlier on and more often because they've had a lot of success here in the last few minutes of having a quarterback pull it and turning it up the field. Underwood ran for the tying touchdown. With about two minutes left in the fourth. Bryce running again. Bryce Underwood, touchdown again. And now I wonder if Belleville kicks it or goes for broke right here and now. Early indication is the Belleville Tigers are going for it. I like it. I like it. You're at home. Right now, you've established a run with your quarterback. It opens up a lot. you got to believe that Cass is going to be looking for Underwood to pull it. That brings Beasley into the equation. They're running back a lot more. Let's keep an eye on Rashad Jones, number 44. The sophomore, 6'1", 240, in black, number 44. He's the one that's their best blocker from the H in the tight end position. Each team gets one timeout in overtime, and Cass Tech uses it. I like it. Use it now, you're hoping that uh, Dewan Rogers thinks about it a little bit longer, decides to kick if you're Marvin Rushing, but I think he's committed, he being head coach of the Tigers. Dewan Rogers, the acting head coach, started coaching in the district final against Salim. A 27 year old who played at two teams that won state titles at Cass Tech. And now he is trying to stop Cass Tech from getting back to another state championship game. Marvin Rushing, once upon a time, was one of Dewan Rogers' coaches. And now he's hoping a man he used to consider a protege doesn't break his heart. What's the play call here if you're Belvin? I think you read it. You, you run what you've been running with the cue. Let let Bryce Underwood read it, but he's got to he's got to read it true. That defensive end works up the field, pull it. But if he cl crashes down trying to take Bryce out of the equation, Underwood, he's got to give it. Bryce Underwood, the best sophomore quarterback in America. Now you also got to. They've had some bad snaps tonight, so you you got to think about that as well. This is your ball game. A trip to the state title is on the line. Underwood, run and left. Bryce Underwood, yes! Belleville will have the chance to defend their crown.
Well, Bryce Underwood's had better nights throwing the football. But I don't know if he's going to remember a night that's been better running the football, and he saved the best for last. This is just outside zone. They don't even pull anyone. They just let him read it. They block at the point of attack. He uses his speed to get to the corner. A little bit of a hold on Corey Sadler there as he kind of sells it. But you know what? 19, you played tonight. You showed up in the second half when he needed you. He didn't, couldn't do it with your arms, so you decided to do it with your legs. That's a sophomore. Well, it's time for tonight's player of the game, brought to you by the Southeast Michigan Ford Games. Hmm, who I could that be? I wonder who it could be, huh? That is a young man who is going places. That is a young man who is going to go to any school in America he wants. Tonight he just made a memory and sent Belleville back to the state championship game. What a ball game for Rob. Producer Brian, Director Max, and all of our crew here, Brave in the Elements. Evan saying so long. Belleville in a thrower. Off we go to Pistons Live. Mickey and Tim standing by. They will take you and get you ready for Pistons and Lakers. We can only hope that one's as good as this.